Oh, I don't know. Something about putting my socks in the wash or something. Yeah, that was when you took them off. I mean, the last thing I said to you before you started snoring. You are going to tell me, so tell me. I said I wanted hand clearing up in here, didn't I? I don't want these pots leaving it sink, you know, and you sloping off. I want them washing up and clearing away. And you can get this vacuum and go over the carpet and all. What for? You're flaming forgotten, haven't you? Eh? My mother's coming this morning! You can be damn cruel sometimes, you Vera. What's cruel about that? Well, it's better than shouting down me ear, but shouting something like that. Well, I just hope you don't get old and, and helpless. No, don't you worry, I'm well on my way. Oh, well, God help you then. Because if you get what you deserve, do you know that nobody will lift a finger for you? Do you know she's been poorly for years, she has. She comes every breast and gild, and when she comes, you make, you make a life of misery! I make her life of misery, you've got to be kidding! She starts on me the minute she sets foot through that flaming door. According to her, the only decent thing I have ever done in my life is promise you all my worldly goods and I've never put a foot right since. <laughs> I make her life a misery. Look, I haven't got time to argue with you. Just get this house cleared up and go this garbage with vacuum. Yeah, I won't be home at dinner time. Oh, why? Why won't you? Because he's short-handed at the pub. Won't take kindly to leave, leave him in the lurch. I'll get a sandwich or something. Flipping marvel, I said. Do you know it's only second time she's been this year? And you can't even stay in to say hello to her. It is her I'm thinking about. Last time she came here, she sat in that chair and ranted and raved at me for a full ten minutes. Now, according to her, she is sick of the sight of me. So it follows, if I stay out of the road, it can only be good for her. Now, oh, you know what her blood pressure's like. Supposing she walks through that door, sees me, throws a wobbler and josses it. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you could be right. Mind you, if you insist, I'll give it a try. Look, just to get up off your backside, yeah. yeah. And get this house cleaned! And don't forget to tell Miss Taylor what the doctor said about not doing exercises till your scar's properly healed. Is that right, you know? Yeah, I'll ask him. And hurry up! Uh, can you... I heard. I keep worrying about Susan. Look, she's only having a baby. Shh, keep your voice down. We don't want big ears broadcasting it. For Pete's sake, Big Mouth was all set to broadcast it to all and sundry in a pub last night. I should think one or two might well suspect. Yeah, well, they might suspect she's having a baby, but they don't know how she feels about it, do they? Well, do we? Oh, Ken, she's your daughter. You should know her by now. Didn't you see her face last night when Mike was going to broadcast the good news? Didn't look as if it was good news to her. Yeah, well, that was shock, wasn't it? I mean, it's one thing agreeing to the wishes of your lord and master, but she's gone beyond that, hasn't she? She's been and gone and done it. Yeah, it's more than that. I mean, I know a woman's emotions fly all over the place at a time like this, but... Mum, can I show my operation at school? No, you can't. You don't go around showing people your operations. You do. When I went to Sally's birthday party, her mum showed hers to all the other mothers. Yeah, well, you're not Sally's mum, are you? Can I show it Debbie, then? Only she's my best friend. All right. If Debbie has to see it, you can show it to her, but nobody else. What if they all want to see it? Well, they can go on wanting. I'm not having my daughter showing her stomach to all and sundry. Oh, Mum, they'll think I'm a right one. Well. They can think what they like. Now, come on, let's be having you. We don't want you laying your first day back. Dad thinks you're funny as well. Yeah, well, only funny ha-ha, love, not funny peculiar. Your mother's quite right. Now, go on. Get through that door. <laughs> No, don't worry, I'm sure I can find the place. Uh, look, I'll pick the keys up in about an hour, OK? Yeah, one, two. Who's that you're talking to? That? Ah, uh, well, that was Emily. I was just saying I won't be in today. Why not? Because I have other plans concerning my lovely wife, but not yet, so don't rush. Right then, what do you fancy for breakfast, eh? Uh, how about a couple of lightly poached eggs? I am a dad hand at poached eggs. I'll get me own breakfast. Oh, no, you won't. Now, come on, sit down. Oh, Mike, don't start playing daft games again. Sit down when you're told. I've never felt dafter or happier. <laughs> you don't know what this means to me. And I won't come the heavy-handed father by insisting it's a boy. If there's one thing you taught me, that ladies can be captains of industry, as well as us fellas. Yeah, well, it took you long enough, didn't it? it took us both long enough. But we got there. I'll make the coffee. You decide what you want for breakfast. Any luck on the job front, Martin? Uh, not yet, no. I went for an interview down at my dad's place and they put me on this list, but I don't think they're looking for anyone yet. How are you doing? Oh, managing, you know. You're looking very thoughtful, Mavis. Well, she's worried about tomorrow. She's on jury service. I'm not worried. I'm just thinking about it. It sounds interesting, all that, you know. Hey, it doesn't help to restore your faith in British justice. I'll tell you that for nothing. No, not that again. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I was on a jury once, years ago. 
Now, there are these four lads. They've been on a pub crawl around Weatherfield. And one of them says, hey, stop the van. I want to get out for a... Well, you know. <laughs> so he nips round the corner, mugs an old lady, pinches a rambag, shoves it up his anorak, gets back in the van and says, OK, lads, let's get going. Now, later on, when they were arrested, the one that had stolen the handbag admitted it. So he was sent to prison. The other three, the three that we were trying, said they knew now about oh, it. So I've heard this story once. Uh, listen, if you don't want to hear it again, go in the back and plug up your lug holes mm. and have a cup of tea. These two haven't heard it, have you? No, no we haven't. See? Now then, where were I up to? Um, them three lads that didn't know about it, weren't Right. Or so they said. Yeah. Anyway, it was a real puzzler, and the judge was no help. I mean, he just sent us out to make up our minds. And in them days, you know, the verdict had to be unanimous. So. Giving a rage away now. Hey, stop interrupting. <laughs> anyway, we took a vote, and ten of us said guilty, and two women said not guilty. So we started arguing. Mm. Anyway, a couple of us, me included, remembered the detective saying, on such and such a date, when I arrested the accused in Hollyhead, and we said, well... What were they doing in Hollyhead if they're supposed to have been on a pub crawl in Weatherfield? So we thought, right, we'll ask him. So we sent a note round to the judge asking him, what were they doing in Hollyhead? Mm. He sent a note back saying, mind your own business, get on with it. <laughs> anyway, we started arguing again, but to cut a long story sideways, we finally convinced these two daft women and we brought in a verdict of guilty. Right. Now you are not going to believe this. But when we were coming out of court, the copper who'd been looking after us said, it's any consolation to you, you know. You've done the right thing. And we said to him, how do you know we've done the right thing? He said, how do I know? We've had to bring him out of prison today to stand trial here. Yeah. They'd stolen the van, beaten up a young lad in the Duke of Wellington. When they'd had enough of that, they drove over to Rill, broke in a warehouse, stole a load of cloth, and were caught trying to catch the Irish ferry in Hollyhead. And you knew nothing about all this? Not a blind word. It's all changed now, though, hasn't it? Oh, it's going to be changed. Well, not before time. I mean, supposing we brought in a verdict of not guilty, mm. wouldn't we have looked, Charlie? Mm. We'd have had no faith in British justice for the rest of our lives, and I haven't got much as it yeah, is. but be fair, Rita, you weren't trying them for those other things. You're not telling me it didn't have a bearing. Well, maybe, but... I mean, look, supposing it's a burglary, well, all the police would have to do would be to arrest someone who'd been in prison for the same sort of thing before, and then... As soon as the judge tells the jury that man's record, well, it doesn't stand a chance, even if it wasn't him. Well, I'm right, aren't I? Look, Mavis, you see it your way, and I'll see it mine. And when you come collecting for the villains, don't rattle your tin under my nose, because you'll get nothing. Well, that was all very informative, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you learn something every day, don't you? You certainly do. <laughs> Good luck for tomorrow, Mavis. Thank you. Hope your case is as interesting as Rita's. Far <laughs> love. Right. Bye. Bye. Right, Jack, fetch me some slim line tonic soap you can slope off for your dinner. I'm not that bothered. I may as well stay here and have pie and chips or something. Give us two halves a lager bet, please. Now, what's up? I've just offered him the chance to skive off and he's turned me down. What do you reckon, Ivy, middle-aged madness? Uh, Mother-in-law madness, more like it. She's coming round for a dinner. Ah, uh, can't you be doing with her? Got a very funny sense of humour. On the sick side, you know. Last time she was here, I had her in stitches. Me and Arlie had me playing hand shots in the door. <laughs> what's she like, Jack? She's Vera's mother, isn't she? What else do you need to know? Is that who Vera gets a lovely disposition from? Aye, all of it. Except a left duke. I think she gets that from her father, whoever he was. Uh, Bet, just make that one half a lager. I think I'll pop round and say hello to Mum, seeing as you're not going to be there. I couldn't stand pair of you. Jack, have you ever brought her in here, the mother-in-law? No, she doesn't come round to see us that often, thank God, and when she does, I take her round to flying off. Oh, thanks very much. Hey, no, we only think of you. I don't like her flying off. Well, she can't be that bad. You put your money down. Uh, Jack, it's for you, Mrs. Murray. Mrs. Murray? One of your girlfriends, is it? Oh, he's got that many, you can't remember the names. Hello? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, what a pity. Nothing serious, is it? I am, I'm glad to wear that, yes, yes. Right, thanks for ringing. I'll put, pass the message on, I right. Would you believe it? She can't come. She's ill. Oh, look, he's out, bro. All right? About them tonics. Uh, I'll be back. I'm just going to pass on the good news. It's not like her, you know. She's usually early. Well, are you sure you've got right, Davey? I'm always making that mistake, love. My Bert used to don't remember him for me. No, it's right day or night. Oh, I thought you were staying in pub for your dinner. If that's steak and kiddly pie, I've changed my mind. 
<laughs> well, hard luck. There's only enough for me and my mum. Ah, uh, well, uh, she's not coming. Neighbour just rang the rover. She's ill. Oh, what's up with her? Now serious. I never win the pills, neither. No, 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 it, it's now. Nervous exhaustion, the woman said. Ah, oh, well, you might as well stay, then. I'm not letting this dinner go to waste. Not unless you found it, though. Yeah, then uh, I asked first. No, no, thanks, Vin. I had some to oh. pub. Uh, where are you going? It's ready. I'll be back. I'll just get a couple of crates up for bet. Mm. Hey, well, Jake, Vera, you've took afternoon off and all, haven't you? That means you've lost your Saturday overtime money. Ah, oh, well, I... I'll go round and see my mum after my dinner. Only don't let on to our Jack. He'll only say it's a waste of petrol. <laughs> oh, right, I'm off. Is that right, Mavis right. is up before Beak tomorrow? Oh, don't worry. She's behaving as big she was. I think she fancies herself as Margaret Lockwood, you know. It's a very serious business, you know, being on a jury. Oh, you don't have to tell Mavis that. She's Ooh, frightened to death. Don't you look well, eh? Oh, well, you know what that is, don't you? No, what is it? It's the uh, excitement of living with me. Yep. Every day's something new. Now, come on, or you miss a new surprise. What's that, then? Oh, don't ask me. I'm always the last to know. No, she's not. She's always the first. Now, come on, get in the car. Oh, I could do with a surprise or two. They're not all pleasant, you know. Oh, you don't have to tell me, then. I share of the wrong sort. I wonder where he's got lined up for this time. Hey, heaven knows. Yes, little sweetheart. Oh. Come on, then out you get. Take a couple of breaths. We're ten quid a lunk for this. Where are we? The end of the rainbow. Dreamsville. Paradise. Because that is Baldwin Towers. Where darn soon will be. What? Yeah. We've agreed a price. All it needs now is a couple of signatures. Come on, then, then you get. You ain't seen nothing yet. Are you in court tomorrow, Mavis? Yes. You ought to feel honoured, Mavis. Thanks. Nobody's ever invited me. And me neither. Do you reckon they're trying to say something? I wouldn't be surprised there. <laughs> oh, no, there'll be no slur <laughs> intended. They just take top so many names off the roll. Oh, that's nice to know, Percy. I was beginning to think they were ignoring me. <laughs> oh, no, now like that. Eddie or you, just a couple of youngsters. Plenty of time for you to do your civic duty. I suppose you've <clears> been <throat> called, have you, Percy? Oh, I. November 1947, to be exact. Where did you have to go? Oh, I went to Manchester Sizes, Hightown Street. Mind, they didn't live round here in those days, no, and there's been a lot of changes, not just the buildings, neither. The whole of society's altered, not for the better. We've got a taste of what was to come. I suppose you've got a tale to tell, have you, Percy? I have that. Oh, who hasn't? I beg your pardon? Uh, no, nothing, sorry. No, these two thugs were standing in the dock, you see, the robbery with violence, this old chap who had the house caught him at it, and they gave him a right going over mm. Man, there's no special about that sort of thing these days. I mean, those sort of cases are ten a penny. But they weren't then, so you can tell the sort they were. Now, believe me or believe me not, they spent the whole of the trial staring at us in the jury box. They never took their eyes off us. You could almost hear them saying, I know you. But it didn't deflect you from your purpose, did it? Oh, no, now, come on, now, would it? No, no, we... We found them guilty. They got three years apiece. Naturally, we thought, well, that's the end of the matter, but, oh, no... The fellow been sat next to me in the jury box, a funeral uh, director from Stockport Road. He got a brick through his plate glass window. He did. And the, the cars parked outside, the, the earth and two limousines, all their windows are gone, the tyres were slashing, never seen out like it. Oh, they'd remembered us all right. But I thought you said they were, they were imprisoned. They were, but they had mates in court, didn't they? Listening and looking. I was all right because I was just a normal householder in those days, but people that were in business or had a shop, oh, they found them all right. Well, that sort of thing don't go on nowadays, does it? What? It's a thundering sight worse now. But you just got to forget them and do your bound on duty. That's all that matters, isn't it? Mm. Well, I'll be off. Uh, you don't know the calendar, do you? You haven't got a nice, juicy murder, have you? I don't know. Never mind. You enjoy it. I think I'll go make myself a cup of tea. 
Oh, that were all my fault. I mean, fancy asking Purse if he had a tale to tell. I must be down. Well, you did ask for it, didn't you? He's not exactly the head of the diplomatic corps, you know. Well, he's talking rubbish, isn't well, he? Well, of course he is, but you know Percy. If there's an extreme to run to, he'll get there as fast as his little legs will carry him. All the same. She won't sleep a wink tonight. Not a wink. I think I could pay you now. Oh. <laughs> Well? Very nice. Made a good job of the bathroom, didn't they? Mm. Yeah, now they must have spent a fortune on that fitted bedroom. You know, when I was a kid, I used to look out of my back bedroom window and all I could see was slates and roofs and factory chimneys. If I stuck my head right out and looked to the right, I could just about make out the cranes on Rotheride docks. <laughs> that was on a clear day. Not a blade of grass in sight. And when I got to thinking about getting married and having kids, which was when I was about 13, because I was a bit forward. I thought to myself, well, they're going to have better than this. I mean, if I could have just seen that one tree, I'd have thought I'd been in heaven. <laughs> look what they got. I mean, look at the playing fields they got here. I could take them for walks. They can have a pony apiece. And... Look, they've got their own football field over there. <laughs> Remember that? I'm going to need plenty of boys. It just, it knocks you for six, doesn't it, eh? And do you know what? You couldn't get a decent semi in Twickenham for what they're asking for this. They must be mad down there. Right then. If you get our skates on, we can stop for a drink at that little pub we pass. Unless you want to have another look. No, I'm ready for off. Seen enough of you? Yeah. Right, let's get going then. I'm going to Night, get a yeah. you know. I'm off to earn some more pennies. Uh, hey, you! Uh, when are you going to get this damp batch seen, sir? Oh, don't worry about that. I'll get round to it. You know what that means, don't you? Two paces down the street, I've forgotten what I say. Well, they're all the same, Mary. I mean, yeah, cos all the same. Your Bert would never like that. Ah, but my Bert could turn his hand to anything, love. There weren't many like him. Uh, you were lucky, you. Lucky? Well, you know what I mean. Dear, how is your mother, love? I mean, can we talk back to her now that your Jack's up to? Ah, uh, not so good, kid. She had this mate lived next door, you know. They had a cord, not three times, on the lobby wall. Meant come round for a cup of tea. Anyway, a couple of mornings ago, she knocks three times and no happens. So she knocks again and no happens. Anyway, when district nurse comes, she tells her whenever they'll get police and they're breaking. Poor old souls lay there in bed, dead as a doornail. Of course, that puts the mother in bed, doesn't it? Poor old soul, yeah. Oh, there's no like having real neighbours, is there, Vera? Yeah. I thank God every night that I'm not in that living a block of flats or stuck out in the country somewhere. Do you know that's just what my mother said? I think in a quiet way, you know, she was quite proud of herself. Yeah. I mean, like she said, if they hadn't have had this arrangement, poor old devil could have been there for days. Mind you, I told her. I said, uh, what a fellow, you know, having snuffed her. But it's not very pleasant, is it, I mean? No, no. She's going over it, though, isn't she, Vera? Your mother, I mean. Oh, ah, well, she's hard not to crap me, ma'am. But, you know, I worry about her. I mean, living on her own, I mean, where she is. Yeah. She don't know she's going to have living next door to her, does she? Oh. There's a lot of talk about looking after your old neighbours, but, well, it doesn't always happen, does it? Especially with young folk. Ah, yes, but you've got enough on bringing your own family up all these days, really, haven't you, love? Yeah, I suppose you have. I'll blow it. Come on, we'll drown her sorrows. We'll have a drink, uh, too. <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll have a wake on our Jack's beer. Tastes a lot better knowing it's his. <laughs> nice, terrific. Just what we're looking for. I don't think she's taken it in yet, you know. She doesn't believe it. <laughs> it's taken me all my time as well. Yeah, listen, um, I'll be able to get all the jobs done out there, won't I? Well, I'm, I'm going to need a new kitchen for a star. I mean, I don't care how fashionable your country kitchens are. I don't want one looking like my grandmother's. No, I want the whole house, uh, you know, right up to date like the rest of the house. All the latest gadgets. <laughs> I know you don't have to tell me. I mean, I know all these idiots going in for this Victorian rubbish, but I'm not one of them. I don't believe in going backwards just because it's fashionable. Uh, where is it exactly? Well, it doesn't seem to have a name, but it's the other side of Glossop. Quite a long way, the other side. So, right in the country, eh? Yeah. Smashing. 
What do you say, love? Shall we buy a pig farm? The way you wolf your tea tonight, I thought we already had. They're charming creatures, you know, women, aren't they? Best husband of yours. Excited, is he? Oh, he's over the moon. Is he coming in? Yeah, he's just got a couple of phone calls to make. <clears throat> oh, here he is now. Well, you can have Mike. I'm just getting him in. No, my shot. Uh, Gloria, what have you got a minute? Oh, okay. Six in table service. Stretch a point for the big spenders, Ella. Yes. You've been telling you all about it. Ah, oh, sounds wonderful. It is wonderful. They're like Chateau Monton Rothschild. Oh, what's that? It's some expensive wine or other. Don't bother remembering the name. I'll never drink it. Who <laughs> won't wait till I get my millionaire? Right, no. what's your pleasure? Uh, Don't you dare. Gloria, mm. just hang on a bit. Daddy's Deirdre on her own. As far as I know, yeah. Oh, well, I think I'll call her and keep her company. Okay. Catch up on the gossip. Yeah, tell her all about it. Watch her turn green. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you soon. Right, what's everyone having then, eh? Uh, usual for me. Same again all round. Yeah. Well, you won't have to worry about us very much longer then, Gloria. We're going to Derbyshire. Here, why don't you get a job in the local pub, eh? Put a bit of colour in your cheeks. Oh, Alan, excuse me a minute. Yeah. I just want to keep my eye on Mavis. Oh, what's wrong? Having a little drink. See? Yeah. Well, oh, Ritty, just in time, what till you have? I'm getting us all a drink. Uh, no, not for me, love. I've got one over there. Blooming heck, Mavis, you're knocking it back a bit tonight, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> Mavis, never mind the drink, love. You've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow, so I'll walk home with you and we'll have a nice coffee. Well, I'll just have to go to the powder room. Hmm? Well, at least they've been modernised. She can't hang herself with lavatory chain. What's up with her? Jewelry, is that it? Yeah, and Daft Purse has been getting on at her. He reckons if you bring in a guilty verdict, you do the sentence. Oh, well, he's an idiot, that man, isn't he? Alan, hold tight to me drink for a few minutes. I'm just walking maybe some to the bit. Oh, all right. Okay. Come on, love. He just wants his own little world. And he doesn't seem to care if that means cutting the rest out. And I'm not sure that doesn't include me. Oh, no, he wants you. Yeah, but as a glorified nursemaid, that's all he wants me for. He wants me to fill the house with kids and then look after them all. What women would think that was heaven? Well, I'm not one of them. He wanted kids. I wanted a career. At least for a few more years. We had some terrible rows about it. You knew nothing about him. Yeah, I guessed. So we compromised. At least I thought we did. I'd have a baby, and then I'd go back to work. But this house, well, it's put paid to all that, hasn't it? He'll roar off down here every morning, and, and I'll be stuck up there twiddling my thumbs and washing flipping nappies. Don't I have the right to determine my own life, Deirdre? Don't I? You're not dressed yet. No. Thought I'd go in looking like this this morning. Give Mike Bogan a thrill, a glimpse of my baby dolls. Yeah, top the teapot up while you're on your feet, kiddo. Look, I've got a better idea, kiddo. You top it up. Seeing as how I'm doing in three and a half minutes. Well, you don't seem that bothered. I'm not. It's just one of them days. I felt like jumping on the alarm clock. I did it with touch and go. Who wants brought this on? Oh, I was thinking about that, sir. Well, maybe it's something you should have jumped on. It might have done him a bit of good. Look, he's all right, he's the lad. There's plenty worse. I just miss him, that's all. He was always going to flee the nest sometimes, look. Well, I know that, don't I? But look at Ivan. Well, there, Brian, he's made a life for himself. And he lives around the corner. She sees him and kids nearly all the time. I mean, why couldn't Atari have found himself a nice girl, local? Because he's an adventurer. Always wants to see what's over the next hill. I used to be the same myself. Yo! You never wanted to go next street, you. So flipping idle. I have my dreams, don't you, Fret? Just been in his bedroom now. Centre. Thank God for that. If you'd have found half a dozen squatters up there, I could understand why you're getting so aerated. <laughs> Look, I'm serious, Joe. It's getting me down. You'll not come back, love. Well, I'm not giving myself a will. But it's like all, eh? You know, like... Like what when you, when you have a tooth out. Do you know, I'm sure I'd feel a lot better if there was somebody else in there. Someone else like who? Well, like a lot, Joe. Forget it. Look, it's not such a bad idea, Joe. It's a lousy idea, Vera. Well, there's plenty of room in this house for three. A son is one thing, Vera, but I'm having no stranger sat here getting marmalade all over my racing page. But there wouldn't be a stranger, would there? Not once you got to know him. I'm not getting to know him because they're not coming in the first place. They reckon an Englishman's home in his castle, and as far as lodgers are concerned, I am pulling up the flaming drawbridge. Well, I'm worried about her, Ken. Who? 
Never you mind. It's Susan, isn't it? Go and get ready for school, clever clog. You sent me out last night as well when she came. I hate secrets. No, there's no secrets, no. There's just things that grown-ups need to talk about without young ears flapping around. It's not fair. No, it never is. Is it worth creating all this aggro for? Is what worth it? Susan being a bit moody. Oh, she's more than a bit moody, Ken. She's very upset. Yeah, well, the timing was a bit off, wasn't it? She wasn't ready for kids yet. But it's happened. Happens to a lot of girls who are far less well prepared for motherhood than she is. I mean, I'll give him one thing. She won't have to worry about the cost of disposable nappies. Oh, it boils down to more than money, for heaven's sake. I sympathise with her, love. Nobody more than me. But it's not the end of the world. Bet you in a couple of months she'll be asking you to come out and help her choose nursery wallpaper. Yeah, that's another thing. This house he wants to buy, she hates it. Well, she told him. She's going to. Then let her handle it, but it's between the two of them. You keep out of it. Look, she came here to talk to me last night. What was I supposed to do? Slam the door in her face? Oh, no, no, of course not. But it doesn't do to get too sympathetic. I mean, don't take sides. You don't want her going back to him and saying, and another thing, did he doesn't think I should move into this wretched house either. She wouldn't do that. Oh, who knows what goes on in the thick of a marital row? Look, love. I don't like the way he's manipulated her. And I don't like the fact that she's unsettled. But haven't we both had more than enough heartache from that quarter as it is? I can't live there, Mike. You'll be all right once you get used to it. You're building up some sort of fantasy. We're not country people, neither of us. Well, that's because we've never tried it. You late it inside a month. Well, long country walks, unpolluted air, and a quaint old village pub instead of the Rovers. Oh, when did you ever last take long country walks? Well, it's about time I started. It's a whole healthier way of life. Give up the booze, go macrobiotic, take up yoga. I tell you, six months, I look like Jane Fonda. Oh, it's not funny, Mike. I mean, you'll be whizzing off down here every day. What will I do? Well, it's not exactly Siberia, is it? And you'll have your car, and there are trains. You can't go gadding about with a baby in tow. <laughs> Will you want to go gadding about? I still want to lie, Mike. I still want to see me dad and me friends and... Well, we make new friends. I mean, how many bosom buddies do we have round here, eh? I mean, when was the last time you popped in for a cup of coffee with one of the neighbours on this block? Well, will I have a cup of coffee without there, then? A passing sheep? But darling, it's a new way of life. Uh, a new babe. I mean, I think it's bloody exciting. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't share your enthusiasm. Oh, don't worry. You will. You are going to have a fabulous life, Junior. Yeah, dogs, ponies, maybe even a, a treehouse. Your old man kicked a tin camera in the gutters of the East End. You will have the whole countryside. See you, darling. See you tonight. Do your jury service, isn't it? Yes, you should wear a hat. Show proper respect to Her Majesty's court. When I want your sartorial advice, Mr. Sutton, I will ask for it. Yes, you do that. And while we're on the subject, I then button down the front of your blouse unfasten. I beg your pardon. Because if you have to open your collar quick, should you faint? She's no intentions of fainting, Percy. She might not be able to help herself when they show some of them photographs. Even Northern police officers have been noted to go around green round the gills. You know, she ought to have to be excused, eh? She's in. I wouldn't like her deciding life or death over me. In your case, Percy, she wouldn't have much of a problem. Come out, all clear. Oh, of all the people I didn't know, oh, I was just taking a notice. He's just jealous. Jealous? Of course he is. He'd love to be doing it. Well, can't you just see him? Foreman of the jury, Sugden. We find a defendant guilty, my lord. Fifty lashes and a hundred yards in jail. That'd be just for dropping top, if eh? What, what about the earrings, Lisa? Do you think they're a bit overdone? Overdone? Mm. I can't even see them, oh, Mavis. It's so difficult just trying to strike the right balance between being too sombre and too frivolous. She looks fine, doesn't she, Ken? Very businesslike. See? Businesslike. Maybe my black coat would have been more appropriate. Oh, uh, is it someone close? Is what someone close? The funeral that you're going to. It's not a funeral. I've been called for jury service. 
And if you've got any gory warnings, keep them to yourself. Thank you very much. Warnings? No, no. I think you'll find it a fascinating experience. Really? Oh, very much so. Well, yes, I, I am quite looking forward to it, as a matter of fact. Have I got too much lipstick on? There you are. Don't say I never look after your body. Oh, you're a good one. By the left, it's Parky, are you? Well, you want to treat yourself to some fleecy line cons. Oh, sheepskin jacket. No, that I could see myself in. I've always had a fancy for one of them. And a little green tit for, with a feather in it. Dirty great Land Rover. A couple of golden Labradors at your heels. Squire Douglas surveyed his estate. Eh? No, to stop you going jacket. Oh, you're talking money, sweetheart. I mean, I want the real McCoy, none of this imitation rubbish. You've got money. You're not strapped. You and Vera are both earning. Yeah, well, I don't know where it goes to, but it's not on my back, that's for sure. Vera's lodger is fetching extra cash. Except Vera isn't having a lodger. It's one way of boosting your income. Yeah, well, a better way would be you giving us a rise. Mind you, I can understand you not wanting to live in a menagerie at Trois. Come again. Vera's probably got a macho young unk lined up ready to move in. It has been known. Yeah, well, there's only one problem. What macho young unk could go for our Vera? I don't know, Jacko. You did. Oh, I do hope Mavis is going to be all right. Of course she's going to be all right. What do you think is going to happen to her? Well, knowing her talent for confusion, she'll probably be the one that ends up in the dock. Oh, yeah, it's today, isn't it? Yeah. If her knees don't give out before she gets at bus stop, Percy put the fear of God in her. Bless his little cotton She'll socks. have the time of her life. Get herself on some nice juicy sex case. Bit do the world of good. I wouldn't mind a dollop of that myself. Beats changing engine oil. Why? What does? Uh, eating cream buns in bed. <laughs> now listen, madam, I came in to pay, pay people, but looking at the size of it, she'll have to go on my knees in front of the bank manager first. Why is it my fault? Well, I can do without your auto magazine for a start. Most weeks I chuck it away unopened. Oh, yes, and what about your women's magazines? And we definitely don't need two Sunday newspapers. Brian, if there's one thing I look forward to, it's reading all that scandal on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Quite right, Chuck. I mean, how could we survive without knowing the dirt on Joan Collins' okay. latest book? Oh, they get their priorities right, don't they? Aye. Of course oh, we do. It's at least as interesting as knowing who's top of the living football league. <laughs> Never. <gasps> Maybe. Oh. Are you back early, love? Is it over? Oh, please, Richard. I'd rather not talk about it. Still no word from Alec. He'll ring when he's got time. They keep him pretty busy out there. Where is this? Germany. He's organising an entertainment tour around army bases. Oh, I wouldn't mind a bash of that myself. All those suspenders and black stockings. Falling in love again. Never wanted to. What am I to do? I can't get it. Yappily married man, you. Hit it on the button, darling. <laughs> He's feeling very chuffed with his little self these days, isn't he? Well, I'll be having her, so I'd line after a tantrum. It does right, anyway. A man should be boss in his own home. Oh, Sue, I was just going to phone you. Sunshine, I got a couple of hours off. I thought we'd go over the house again, you know, have another recce. No, not this afternoon, Mike. I'll get the keys off the estate agent and we'll have a look round by ourselves. Give you a much better idea. I'm sorry, I can't. Look, I'm going away for a few days. Away? Well, where? Well, it's Cheryl, you see. She's in a terrible state. Her and Tony have split up. Oh, shame. So I said I'd go. But what can you do? Well, she needs somebody to talk to. It's the least I can do, Mike. She's been a very good friend to me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, Gail wants to know, can Risa change this fibre? Risa's upstairs. Oh. Well, can you do it then? I thought you didn't work at the cafe anymore. Oh, I don't. I was just visiting. Find myself volunteered. So, a bit of a loose end, are you? More or less, yeah. Well, you shouldn't have been so keen to chuck up your job and go swanning off to France then, should you? I don't regret it, Mr Bradley. I don't regret a thing. Oh. Hi, are you going to hold a grudge against that lad for the rest of his life? He's caused us a lot of bother, that lad. Jenny caused the bother, so don't go shifting the blame onto him. 
Anyway, she's all right now, which is more than can be said for Madam upstairs. Oh, what happened? Did you manage to wrinkle it up? Oh, well, uh, when... It's all right, Rita. I'll explain to Alan myself. I was objected to. You were what? Well, as a juror, the defence counsel objected to me. On, uh, on what grounds? Didn't specify. Surely they have to say. I don't know, but I would have thought so. No. No? Huh? No, they don't. They can just reject a person and make them feel absolutely useless and humiliated and, and rejected. They, they don't even have to give a reason. I saw Ken go out and I wanted to have a word with you in private. That's all right. It's not like you to be so humble. Well, it's just that these days you intimidate me, Madam Counselor. It's not me. No. No, it's not often I don't know what to do. Susan. Yeah. I thought we got over all our problems. You mean you had? No, we. When she came back after that bad patch, we decided to have another crack at it. You know, start a family. One of you being rather more enthusiastic than the other. All right, she wasn't exactly over the moon about it, but she agreed. And I thought that once she was pregnant, everything would be all right. I mean, women want to have babies, don't they? Women don't come off a conveyor belt, Mike. They come in all shapes and sizes and types. All right, a lot are maternal, but not all. Well, Susan is. I mean, she always said she wanted kids. Yeah, all right. That wasn't the issue, was it? It was when. You saying now, she saying sometime in the future. Anyway, that's academic. I mean, little Baldwin's on the way, isn't he? And I'm sure she's happy about it, deep down. Then why is she so flaming miserable? Well, you... You're throwing a lot of changes at her, all in one go. Accepting motherhood instead of a career. Move into a new house. Well, she wasn't expecting to bring the kid up in a pokey little flat, was she? No, but she wasn't expecting to be dragged out to the remoter wilds of Derbyshire, either. What do you mean? It's a fabulous place. There are a lot of women give their eye teeth for that. You're very good at making assumptions. What assumptions? Assumptions about what women want. I mean, maybe all she wants is a say in the decision. I just wanted to surprise her, that's you all. You mean you wanted to live there, so you took it for granted she would, too. Well... I haven't signed anything yet. She doesn't have to live there if she's so dead set against it. What, you mean you've not already tried to pressure her into it? Done your super salesman out on her, told her what a fantastic place it'd be to bring up a family? Oh, evidently she's been talking to you. Who else has she got? Well, I'm sorry. We shouldn't have made you the mother confessor. Yes. It is a bit... odd. Well, I don't think so. Not for me. I mean, we've always been able to communicate, haven't we? Mike. All right, I agree. I agree. It is a bit odd, but I don't know. Nevertheless, you seem to be the only one that can throw any light on all this. On all what? Well, why is she so bloody-minded? I mean, this afternoon I said to her, I'd take her to see the house again, or, or whatever house she fancied. Do you know where she's going? Newcastle. What for? One of her mates has got emotional problems. One of her mates has... Let her go, Mike. Don't crowd her. Do you uh, mean I have a tendency to uh, be a bit bossy? Yeah, uh, you do take over a bit, don't you? But she's an individual as well. Let her know you respect that. Hey, I love you'll enjoy that one. There's no violence and lots of romance. I hope it's not soppy. I've no patience with all that slopping over each other. No, it's not sloppy. Bye now. Slopping over each other, indeed. In my day, we enjoyed a good snog. What are you talking about in your... Hello, well, love. Hey. Are you feeling better? Oh, fine. But it's not the end of the world. Could happen to anybody. Of course it could. I was silly of me to take it personally. Still think I should have worn my black coat. I'm quite sure it had nothing to do with it. Well, what was it then? I mean... It couldn't have been the earrings. You said yourself you could hardly see them. I don't think it was anything to do with you personally, Mavis. Maybe they just had enough women on the jury already. Something like that. Oh, well, pick on me, then why not on one of the others? Of course, they were probably all married. Well, what's that got to do with it? Prejudice. I mean, they think just because you're a, a spinster that you can't know anything about the ways of the world, that you're incapable of making a proper judgment. Oh, I would doubt that, Mavis. Well, what? It, then why didn't they want me now come on love you just said yourself it's not the end of the world oh, it's all right you make in light of it rita you're not the one who's been made to feel a complete and utter fool Mike, 
you ready? I thought I'd run you to the station. Well, there's no need. I've ordered a cab. Cancel it. I can't. It'll be here in a minute. Is that all you're taking? Well, like I said, it's only a few days. Well, don't rush back on my account, sweetheart. Oh, I can do without the sarcasm. No, I mean it. Your pal needs you. You stay as long as it takes. Really? We're adults, Sue. We may be married to each other, but we don't have to live in each other's pockets. Or in Derbyshire. Come to that. You've changed your tune, haven't you? No, I've been doing a lot of the thinking. Uh, perhaps I was pushing the house a bit too hard. You've got to want it too. Oh, my. I am trying, Sue. I know. That'll be your taxi. Yeah. I'll carry you back. That shouldn't threaten your independence too much. Thanks. I hope Gerald's okay. There can be happy endings, we know. Jack's late. I told him he needn't come in till seven. He'll be doing the last hour on his top. Why's that? Because, my flower, thee and me are off out on the toot, if you're willing, that is. Oh, I'm always willing for a bit of fun, eh? You're not serious. What? My old man, across the channel, ogling all them sexy floor lines, who said I got to stop at home and knit. Indeed. You don't really think Alex up to mischief, do you? No, I don't. But I'd thump the living daylights out of his cuddly little body if he did. You would? I would. I know. It surprises me, you know. For it's all right for you to go out on the razzle. Well, when I say razzle, I had more in mind your girl's natter over a plate full of chicken chow mein and a nice bottle of wine. And if a suave, debonair executive starts chatting you up? I wouldn't even let him have a nibble of my prawn cracker. <laughs> you sound very sure. I am sure. But please, if anybody's listening up there, don't put me to the test. <laughs> Nobody's going to say a word, they need even know anything. Yes, well, I'm not ashamed, because I've nothing to be ashamed of. Well, of course you haven't. Now then, a sweet yeah. sherry and a vodka and tonic. Thanks, right? sir. Sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Sweet sherry and a vodka and tonic. Hello. Are you all right? Now. Good bite, please. Yeah. All right, now? Yes, I'm fine. Good. Perfect. Good. Back to normal. Yes. I should never have worn that hat. It had nothing to do with it, maybe. Well, if it had, it was their bad taste, because it was a very expensive model hat, that, even if I did get it in the sale. That's the spirit. Uh, anyway, it, it's over and done with now. Forgotten. Finished. Oh, I bet if I'd worn a wedding ring, they'd have accepted Oh, Ivy, are you on your own, love? Come and join us. Oh, thanks. I was hoping to catch Vera in. Do you know, it sounds silly, but I still hate walking into a pub, even in here, on my own. It's not silly at all. I think it takes a great deal of courage for a woman to do a lot of things on her own, even in this day and age. Alan! Yeah. Alan, will you get Ivy a drink, love, please? Yeah. Oh, thanks, sir. Can I have a lager and lime, please? I don't yeah. I don't so how are things with Mavis, then? Why? What have you heard? Nothing. Why? What should I have heard? Nothing. Oh, that's all right, then. Yeah. You don't want to go back to your wife in tables. Never go back with him, life. That's my motto. But well, I'm not going back, Mr. Sugden. And even if I was gay, I wouldn't have me, would she? It's what they call a retrograde please. step. No, what you want to do is go forward. Get yourself in a good catering quarter. There's marvellous opportunities in catering. It's a subject I know a lot about. One of many, eh? Right, yes, but uh, get yourself into management. That's the area. By going, if I'd have had the opportunities you lot have got, I'd have finished up giving that Rocky Ford your run for his money. I would that. I remember that, Mr. Sugden. Oh, there you are, Miss Riley. I heard you were back early. Um, wasn't such a long case then. No, it wasn't. No, pretty guilty, did he? What sort of a case was it anyway? Any gratuitous violence involved? Besides, you asking that person, you know, a juror sworn to confidentiality. You can't expect me and four people to breach that. No, no, point conceded, Kenneth. Apologies duly rendered. No offence taken at us, Miss Riley. No, none at all, Mr. Sugden. Hey, before you go, uh, have you given any more thoughts of an idea of mine? Yes. No, I'm having none of your fancy men under my roof, and that's flat. <laughs> what fancy men? It's a very fellow, isn't it? Why is it? Some handsome young hunk. Look, I've already got one handsome young hunk, haven't I? What do I want another one for? All right. For argument's sake, what kind of person was you thinking of? Well, I was thinking of a... young, easy-going bachelor girl. Right, now, even though I said, you said yes, though I won't, Girl? Well, yeah. Look, I'm not stupid, I'm a kid. I mean, a girl will help me in the house. 
A young bloke who want me to iron his shirts for him. Wait on him hand and foot. I've already got one of them, Sam. Well, you never said you were thinking about a, a female, loved you? Well, you didn't give me a chance, did you? You just jumped to conclusions like you always do. Oh, look. But listen, love. What, what do you think, kiddie? I'll have to consider it. Yeah, you'll do that, Petal. Easy going back to the girl, eh? Hiya, is me mammy in here? Yes, she is. And has been long for the past half hour. Listen, are you busy? Oh! No, no, no. Do you know, if I drive now, it's all night. I can pop in here and pass an hour stacking cans. Oh, good. Because I'm desperate, honest. Oh, yeah. Phyllis has just rung to say she's going to be stuck at the Caropody Clinic for another half hour at least. I just don't know how I'm going to manage on my own, ma'am. Well, why insist on trying to manage with just the two of you beyond me? Look, the money we're taking, two jobs, is just about all that business will support. Mm. Anyway, we can manage most of the time. Oh, with a little help from your family and your friends, you can. Yeah. Look, if you don't want to be bothered, just say Girl, so. Yeah, love, no, I don't want to be bothered. Well, I'll be honest with you, with what I've got on today, I need three hours slaving over a sweaty chip, unlike hole in it. Right. Hey, hey, come. Now, before you start saying anything, we'll both regret. I'm coming. All right. Thanks, ma'am. Hiya. Hiya. Hey, have you got a special offer on down at that cafe of yours? Hey? Only there's a small and growing mob gathered around your front door, and I reckon if somebody doesn't open up oh. like mid-suit, they're going to get nasty. Oh. <laughs> Morning, Morning. love. Morning. Oh, do you know, it was some... My mother always said, and by God, she were right. What was that? There's only one thing in this world worse than kids growing up. It's kids when they're grown up. Expect me when you see me, love, even later. All right, see you later. Bye. Like that this morning, then, is it? Oh, there's never a dull moment here. Oh, I remember, I remember. Hey, you're early this morning. Yes, well, I suppose you could say it goes with the territory, really, Sally. Love, if you're unwise enough to get yourself elected councillor for this parish. Do you know, I never remember Mr Roberts getting up at the crack of dawn when he was a local godfather. No, possibly not, Sally, love, but Alf did have one definite and distinct advantage over me in the job, didn't he? And what was that? Well, she just passed you on the way out. <sighs> Wonderful things, you know, wives, when you want your beds making and your table siding while you're out putting the world to rights. Am I right, Mike? What's that? I'm just saying to Sally here what wonderful inventions those wives are now. I'm sure you'll agree with that. Don't even know where mine is. Last heard of, she was somewhere in the Newcastle area. Oh, still up there, is she? Yeah, she was when she phoned me last. Come to think of it, she didn't phone me at all yesterday. Oh, dear. Then again, though, that is the wonderful thing about these newfangled modern telephones, don't you think? What is? Well, there's nothing in the instructions that says you can't ring her. <laughs> I'm not under your feet, am I? Jack, love, you've been under my feet since the first time you trod on them. During the latest choice at the Empire Ballroom. That's what you do. There's not wrong with me, Jack. I've got a boil on his bum. If you must know what's up with me, Jack, I can't weigh up what gets on me weight most. You sat there in that grotty dressing gown, or the fact that you can't even be bothered to put out on your rotten stinking feet. Well, who's come down to breakfast in my dressing gown? Not true, Jack. It's not that long since you was to come down in the grotty pyjamas till I made an objection. What's up with that? It's my house, isn't it? It is our house, Jack. And I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It is low life and common. <laughs> never bothered you before. Wrong again, Jack. It's always bothered me. I've just never mentioned it, that's all. Anyway, uh, I've been thinking. <laughs> so that's it. What? That smell of burning. Do you know I thought we'd a plug on bling? Don't be funny, Vera. Well, what do you expect? Springing like something like that on foot, they're liable to drop dead in front of you. <laughs> I should be so lucky. Pardon? It, will you listen to what I'm trying to tell you? I've been thinking about that lodger business. Oh, that. It's not such a bad idea at that. Oh, I don't know. Last time I mentioned it, you nearly bit me flaming head off. Yes, but that was before I had a chance to weigh up the pros and cons, wasn't it? And now I have. Weighed them up. And for starters, we could certainly use the money. Well, that's what I was so, saying. So, as I was saying, I was thinking and I thought, sir, if you want a lodge of here, who am I to stand in your way? Oh. Oh. Are you quite sure, Jack Love? Definitely. Only I don't want to go to all that trouble of finding somebody and then you'll turn it around saying you've changed your mind after a fortnight. Yeah, but you know me, Vera, so okay, it takes me some time mulling things over. But once I have made my mind up, that is it, isn't it? Oh, 
well, if you're that sure, chat low. I suppose that's it then, isn't it? Right. Right then. See you later. Bye. Still no word from Alec then? Mm. Not so much as a mucky postcard. Hey, Glow, you don't think somebody's turned him, do you? Turned him? Yeah, you know, got him to defect like. I mean, it has to be down as a possibility as that when your husband went to Germany last week and he's not been heard of since. Yeah, I can see him now. Standing on a lonely bridge. Somewhere between the eastern and the western sector. Waiting to be swapped for Michael Caine or somebody. Pie at Glow, won't be easy, that. Having to choose between my Alec and my Michael Caine. <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said that. I shall tell him myself, love, if and when I ever see him again. What do you say, Hilda? So much I've always been very wary about myself. What? Joking about whether or not you're ever going to see somebody again. Ah, yeah, Kilda. Can always rely on you to cheer us up in our darkest hour. Most. Oh, ah, Bill's again, I suppose. Ah, well. You all right, Hilda? Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Hmm. Doesn't sound like it. Well, you've heard about the Lowthers, I suppose. What, you mean that doctor and his wife you go cleaning for? Yeah. Only he's retiring, you know, to this country <laughs> cottage he's bought over in Hartington. Oh, I see. So that's that job gone for the chop, then? Yeah. Mind you, it's not just the money. I mean, they've always been very good to me, the Lowthers, and... Well, going clean in there, it's been... Well, it's been more like a labour of love. Oh, what a shame. In man. fact, one way or another, it's been what you might call a bad week all round for you, hasn't it, Hilda, love job-wise? How do you mean exactly? Well, first the Lowthers, now the Baldwins. Baldwins? Oh. Didn't you know they were moving out as well? I didn't, no. Ah, yeah, Kilda. I never thought I'd live to see the day when you were last with the news. Oh, I suppose you think it's funny, do you? Well, not so much funny, I suppose. More unusual, I would have said. Yes, well, let me tell you. When you have to manage on what I have to manage on every week, it's anything but funny. Losing two good jobs in one fell swoop. Morning, Elder. Was that something I said? She probably just didn't agree with that. That's all, Jacko. About what? How good a morning it was. Good morning, Gloria, and how are you this fine morn, my love? All right. Happy in your work, not to mention your place of abode. Pardon? Where you live, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose I am. Why? No special reason. But don't you ever wonder, Glow, whether it might be better off if you found somewhere a bit nearer? Huh? It's me. Put Emily on, will you? Well, em Emily, um, Susan hasn't phoned since I've been out, has she? No, no, it's just I can't get any join this Newcastle number, that's all. Yeah, all right. Okay. Oh, uh, Emily, uh, Greg Mather hasn't phoned back, has he? Oh. Well, look, um, keep, keep trying him, will you? Right now. Bye. All right now, then, is it? If I carry on with my work? Yeah. Unless you want to tell me what it's all about. Tell me about what? Well, what's on your mind? I mean, you've had a face like a fried egg ever since you came this morning. Now, if I'm in the way by you, me being here when you're doing the work, for God's sake, say so, will you? Only just for the record, I do happen to live here. Yeah, only not for much longer, though, eh? Oh. Oh, you've heard, have you? Yes, I have heard. I must say, it would have been nicer to hear it from them than what actually pays me wages. Oh, so that's what all the little sulks are about, is it? Well, nobody's sulking. I mean, after all, when all's said and done, ours not to reason why, or some will skiv us. Where are you going? Isn't it with Jack? There we are, ladies. Oh. Piping not out of the microwave. Oh. Made for you by my very own answer. Thanks, that's right, Jack. You. Oh, and uh, pink, I thought. Pardon? Pink. For when we redecorate the back bedroom, you know. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to redecorate it, Vera. We're going to have a lodger in there, aren't we? Yeah, pink, right. <laughs> a lodger? That's right. You've been doing what all morning down at this school of yours? Working out how many of us we can get on top of an oil drum. Are you kidding me? 
Not funny, Mr. Sugden. I shouldn't think it is funny wasting good public money on rubbish like that. What do you mean, rubbish? Uh, another pint, please. Right. You can work out a lot about a group of people by standing them on top of an oil drum. <coughs> I imagine you can, like, uh, who was it just stood on your fingers, I suppose. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right, that mate. Right. Oh. Well, I hear you're looking for lodgers, Vera. Not lodgers, love. Lodger. Just the one. How did you find out, anyway? Oh, well, uh, you, Jack, just mentioned it, you know. In fact, I think he thought I might be interested. And are you? Well, hardly. Um, I'm happy where I am, you know. Oh, well, if we're happy, then, eh. Uh... Right. You see? What? He's out of the already. Oh, well. Your Jack, of course. Come on, dear, he's putting feelers out. I mean, taking in lodgers is bad enough, but even thinking of taking a female lodger who likes your Jack around. Domestic suicide, that is. Do you think so, dear? Well, don't you? Depends, I think, myself. On what, for God's sake? Well, what, on what kind of lodger you've got in mind? I mean, there's lodgers, isn't there? There again, there's lodgers. Do you see lodgers? <laughs> I don't suppose you'd know, would you? What? How to spell voluptuous. Didn't you know, Jacko? My middle name, that. Voluptuous. Yeah. How do you spell it? Well, it's sort of... V... V... O... O... L... Uptuous, isn't it? Thanks. How do we happen to miss you on Krypton Factor? I was probably on Mastermind at the time. Why? What do you want to know for? Well, it's just this crossword I'm stuck on, that's all. Oh? Ah, Curly, the very man. Well, look, uh, if it's a sub you're after, forget it, Jack, will you? Because as Shakespeare himself so pertinently put it, neither a borrower nor a lender be. It was him that said it, was it? Miserable well old basket. Well, no, it was Hamlet, really. Well, him as well, eh? No, all I wanted really was a bit of help with this hey. adverb that I'm putting together, you see. Oh, I see. Uh, two more, Jack, please, love. Right, love. I'll fetch them over for you, then, eh? All right, right, love. Then again, perhaps it's neither the time nor the place. Uh, wouldn't be around late this afternoon. No, I could be, I suppose. Yeah. Will you stick around while I finish? Me and you will bomb down the house, eh? Ah, oh, well, you see, that depends. On what? On well, what's in it for me? You what? Who the hell do you think you are now? Some kind of travelling consultant or something? Who am I? I am the bloke whose brains you obviously want to pick. All right, let's say there'll be a drink in it for you, then. Go on, then. But listen, if it's that urgent, why can't we do it here, no? <laughs> Because, my son, number one, round here, walls have ears. Number two, you are looking at the only man in England whose wife can lit read through solid grit walls. <laughs> He'll never wear it, you know, Glenn. Do you think so? I don't know. So when are you thinking of telling him? I want to pick my moments, yeah. Well, it ain't going to be easy to pick it right moment to tell your Jack your mother's moving in with you. Is <laughs> Phyllis back, then? Yeah, she is. Mind you, they're still meeting each other coming back. Are you all right, love? I've only popped out for a moment. Got me fags. Worn me flat shoes, the feet are killing me. A bit pushed, are we? Well, I think girl is round at the cafe. Oh. I'm telling you, there is no way two people can run that place on their own. I mean, I know Phyllis is willing enough, but she's not 21 anymore, is she? Well, if she ever was. <laughs> I'll see you as soon as I can. Right, yeah. Thinking of taking that, are they? Well, I think they might be. Hmm. Why would you be interested? Well, I suppose I might be, if I was desperate like. Not that I'm expecting to be, of course. I mean, they're not that easy to find, good, honest cleaners, you know. No, you're right. Them again, though. They do say it pays to advertise. So I've got no objection to you uh, putting this around a bit that as of next week but one, I shall be coming back on the market again. All right. You'll get 10%. Of course, Sally, love. You take a long time to buy your own holiday home in Majorca on 10% of what I charge an hour. <laughs> Rover's return. Just a minute. Bet! Yeah? Uh, 
Transfer charge call from somewhere called Gorky Park, Moscow, and will we accept it? Huh? Short. Glasses. Speaks German with a distinct Weatherfield accent. <laughs> Never! <laughs> About time at all, Mush. Missed you? Why have you been away, Summer? Well, of course I have. Where have you been, any road? Eh? <laughs> Swastika. <laughs> you mucky little devil. How's it going, anyway? Good. Here? Not a lot, really. Apart from the fire. No, did you not read about that in the German newspapers? Yeah, we got burned to the ground again. Not a lot of harm done, really. No, you see, just as the fire got old, the flood came and put it out. Listen, when am I going to see you? Oh, Yeah, I suppose I can manage. Have you? Will you ring soon? I love you too, Alec. I don't care what they say about you. No, I'm not saying that over the phone. Somebody might be listening. Come on now. Bye-bye, tiger. Gonna be back soon then, is he? Well, not all that soon. Tell you what, Glow, hearing his voice made me realise. What? How much I'm missing him. I must be going soft in my old age. Oh, come on, Jack. You said there'd be a drink in this. Well, that's a drink, in it? Look, it's all we've got in the house. Now he tells me. Right, so what about this advert, then? Well, what about it? Well, you're going to give his hand with it, aren't you? Well, seeing as how any other plans I might have had for this afternoon have had to be aborted, I might as well, eh? Right, right. <sighs> By the way, you, you do realise it's not for me, this advert? No, it's for a mate of yours. How do you know? Let's just say a guest, shall we, Jack? Now then, this mate of yours, what actually is he advertising for? A woman, really. A woman? Yeah, you have heard of them, haven't you? Women? Oh, yeah, I've heard of them, Jack. What I've never come across before is a bloke who's hard-faced enough to think of advertising for one. Not that sort of woman. What we're on about here is, is more your housekeeper, companion sort of thing. Oh, I see. Mm. Sort of, uh, cheerful, yeah. hard-working, <laughs> homely. Yeah, well, not that only necessarily. I mean, like, I do understand it's hardly going to be Madonna that we end up with. But then again, if it's a dog we want, we can bring the dogs home, can't we? Right? Right. Right, sir. Uh, something else. Not a word to the wife about this. Whose wife? Yours or this mate of yours? Both of them, really. I see. So this mate of yours hasn't actually told his wife that he's advertising for a woman? Well, no, no. What he thought was, you see, he, he thought he'd surprise her. Present her with what they might call a fate of complete, like. I see. Believes in living dangerously, this mate of yours, does he? What? Ooh, he's one of them fellas, Curly, that lives out there, you know, right on the very edge. Oh, I. Hello, Joe. It's me, Mike. Well, I'm all right. All the better for hearing you at last. Put uh, Susan on, will you? She's left. Oh, well, left for where? Well, well, why the hell didn't she phone me and tell me what train she was catching? Hang on a minute. Well, tell me what train she was dashing for and perhaps I'll still be in time to meet it. Well, can't you find out? Hello? Hello, Cheryl. Oh, bloody hell. It's only me. I can see it's only you. What do you want? Well, all I wanted to say was that he did call eventually. Who did? Mr. Mather. Oh. Well, as I understood it, you did want to speak to him quite urgently about something. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what did he say? Well, very little, really, once he'd established you weren't there. I did suggest he tried you here at the flat, but he said he'd been doing that for the past ten minutes and you'd been engaged all the time. But he says he'll ring again tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, all right, Emily, thanks. Keep trying. Oh, and Emily, 
I'm sorry I bit your head off just now. It's just that, well, these flaming phones are driving me around the bend. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, all right? Right. Hmm? Bye. Bye. How can all the lines from Manchester be engaged? <sighs> oh, hello. Um, uh, Manchester. Train inquiries, please. How do you mean, Mavis? You don't know. Do you still put adverts in that window of yours, or don't you? Well, yes and no, really. What do you mean, yes and no? Well, yes, we do, but no, if by that you mean, do we put any sort of advert in? Well, what the hell can you possibly find wrong in that? Accommodation available in pleasant family home would suit young, attractive female, rent negotiable, please me, Weatherfield, double two, seven, one, and ask for this. <laughs> well, I should have thought that was self-evident. But to me, isn't it? Well, I mean, for starters, who is this Vince? Oh, well, that's me, innit? I'm going incognito for, on behalf of this mate of mine. Oh, yeah. Now, Mavis, I hope you're not going to let your feverish imagination run away with you on this. All my mate is looking for is a lodger, that is all. Well, if you can assure me that's all it is, then... Of course that's all it is. What the hell did you think it was? Well, I mean, I don't know what to think. I mean, when people do advertise for that sort of thing, well, they phrase it in all sorts of funny ways, don't they? What sort of thing? Well, that sort of thing. Oh, I think you know exactly what sort of thing I mean, Jack Duckworth. Oh, you mean that sort of thing? Well, Mavis, what a very mucky mind you must have to go thinking something like that about a perfectly innocent advert. What are you accusing me of? Well, nobody's accusing anybody of anything. Well, I should hope not, because if you are, our Vera will have something to say about that, you know. Yes, and I think Rita will have something to say about that. I'm sorry, but I can't accept it. <laughs> there are other windows, you know. Oh, I'm dead pleased, really. <coughs> what about? Well, the way Tracy's caught up since she's been back at school, it surprised me, I can tell you. Yeah, well, kids often do, don't they? Yeah, but uh, not usually for the better, in my experience. <laughs> Cup of tea? Oh, yes. Oh. Hello, Law. Hi. So, is everything all right? Of course. I'm not around then. Well, yeah, he's just putting the kettle on, as a matter of fact. Do you fancy a cup, or are you still off the stuff? No, I could murder one. Well, oh. When did you get back, then? Uh, about five minutes ago. And you've, uh, you've not even been home yet? No, not yet, no. Uh, how come? Is anything wrong? No. And, and the baby's still all right, is it? What baby? I said, what baby? There is no baby, Dad, not anymore. Oh, no. I said I was going to Newcastle, right? Well, I didn't. I went to London. I went to a, a clinic I'd recommended. Oh, no. What's the word they use for it now? Terminated? <laughs> Are you all right, love? Yeah. Do you want a, an aspirin or anything? No, thanks. Oh, I'll drink your tea. You managed to sleep? Bit. How do you feel in yourself? I mean, physically. I don't feel ill. Mind you, I didn't feel so hot on the train from London. But I can't get over you going off like that, all that way on your own and just doing it. I had to. You're not saying you'd have come with me, are you? I might have, if I couldn't have taught you out of it. Nobody could have taught me out of it. You didn't really give anyone the chance, did you, love? Well, it was my problem, it was my business. It was nothing to do with anybody else. Not even Mike? No, definitely not him. Oh, nobody wants any breakfast, then? No, I'll make some in a minute, love. I'll, uh, I'll make a start. What 
Ross, he said? Not a lot, actually. I think he's a bit out of his depth. Is he shocked? Naturally. What did you expect? I don't mean surprised. I mean shocked. Sickened. No. Definitely not that. Are you? I'm very sad that you felt you had to have an... The word's abortion, Deidre. I don't think for me it would even have been a last resort. I had to. I had no choice. I hadn't, Dad. I had no choice. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know about choice, Susan. But you had the right. Do you know what I think I'll do today? Surprise everybody, break into a shuffle. No, I think I might make a start on sprucing up that back bedroom. Oh, you're definitely going to paper it then. You yeah, were set, didn't I? I think I'll start on the woodwork, give it a lick of paint. Yeah. yeah, well, it could definitely do with it. Like rest of paint work in this house. So if you start on the lodger's room, who knows? I might just carry on and decorate through and finish up with a mural on the backyard gate, eh? Oh, you're still in favour of lodger then? Oh, 110%, love. I mean, why waste a perfectly good bedroom where we can make a few bob with it? Eh? <laughs> yeah, why indeed? <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, it was her all right, no danger. Saw with my own eyes. But what's so unusual about Susan Baldwin going into her own dad's house, Mrs Ogden? Well, she's been missing for the best part of a week, hasn't she? Only according to you. Oh, listen, I clean there. Now, a cleaner gets to be very sensitive to the atmosphere in the house. And the atmosphere in the Baldwins lately has been thick with, well, atmosphere. How can it have been if one of them's been missing? Cos she left hers behind her, didn't she? Festering. Oh, you could all but taste it, never mind, feel it. Would you take pay for this polish, please? Oh. Mm. I'm not satisfied, you see. With my shoes. No, they want another coat of polish. You satisfy a lot of people, but not me. Well, a fact. Thank mm. you. Not one of you have noticed, have you? Noticed what? What I'm wearing. Oh, your medals. You got your medals on. Give the girl a cream bun. And do you know why I've got them on? Because it's November the 11th, Remembrance Day. I'm going down to the cenotaph to pay my respects to the grandest, bravest bunch of lads that ever walked God's earth. And there's not one woman amongst them. And do you know why? Because in the First World War in particular, a lot of women were so busy sending white feathers, they hadn't time for sacrificing. Good day to you. I've never sent anybody a white feather, have you? No. What time is it? Nearly nine. Mike should be at work by now. He's not been at work much these last few days. Why? Well, I'm afraid he's been trying to find you, love. He tried to contact you in Newcastle. Oh. What are your plans today? Plans? You can stop here, love. Of course you can stop here. Do you know what I spent most of the time doing on the train from London? Composing my explanation to Mike. Never managed it. Perhaps if you tried to explain it to us. I just felt trapped. I just felt that I wasn't in control of my own life anymore. I, and I thought you've no need to be trapped. Not at 22, not in this day and age. So I went and I got myself untrapped. It's as simple as that. Well, it took a lot of courage, Susan. I think Deirdre thinks it was more selfish than brave. I never said that. I, I just said I didn't think I could have done it. Or would have done it. No. I'm not trying to say that Susan didn't have every right. No, I'm not. Well, what are you saying? I'm, just... Oh, don't you two start falling out, please. Talking about plans. Well, I think my next one's obvious. Mike, I would have thought. But you don't need to see him today. Not if you don't feel up to it. If I could just work up to it in my own time. You take as long as you want, love. Suitcase. Didn't look at all round. I'll get it. Uh, 
here, isn't it? Yes, yes, she is. Well, what's she <clears> doing <throat> here? She came last night. Last night? Yeah. It's Mike. Well, I'm not sure she wants to see you. Well, she's my wife. I see her whenever I want. Sue, you don't have to see her. I can't put it off forever, can I? I just don't understand all this. What are you doing here? All right, I'll ask you again. What are you doing here? You need to shout. Can we go, please? Oh, go where? Oh. What is going on? Mike, just get her home. Do you think I should go? It's between them. Yeah, but he might do something yeah, silly. He won't do that. Well, I'm waiting. I said I'm waiting, Susan. Well, let's see if I can start you off, shall I? Where the hell you been for the last three days? Now. I don't think that you've been with your mate in Newcastle. No, I haven't. Then where have you been? London. London? Well, what did you want to go there for? Ah, oh, don't tell me. You've been on a shopping trip, have you? Hey, get yourself some new gear before you, uh, well, change shape. Well, why the hell didn't you tell me? I mean, why go on the slider to come with you? We could have done a bit of celebrating. I've been in hospital. Hospital? Why? Some sort of, uh, you know, complication, is it? I've had an abortion. You what? I've had an abortion. I've terminated the pregnancy. No, oh, there was some sort of complication, was there? Eh? Hmm? No, no complication. Do you mean... You did it deliberately? Yes. You murdering little bitch. Ladies, you're very good help. Well, never me for past favours and future pleasures, and you will be glad to know that that back bedroom is now looking as gleaming like a brand new set of false teeth. Well, I'm very pleased to wear it, Sean. Mine. It is costing me a few bob on painting equipment. I just thought I'd mention it for when we start drawing rent. You know. Yeah. Well, I'll see you get every penny of it back, Sean. And I shall carry on the good work this afternoon. Yeah, you do that, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are a devil, Vera. I don't know how you kept your face straight, I don't know. I nearly didn't. Live with a con man long enough. You get to be better at it than he is. So when are you going to tell your Jack to get to your mother you've got lined up in his back bedroom? When time's right, kid. And I've got a feeling it's on turn. Why? In God's name, why? I had to. I had no choice. You keep saying that. It's the truth. You did have a choice. You could have kept it. I couldn't have kept it. But it wasn't only yours to get rid of. It was mine as well. I was the father. It was my decision. It was not your decision. It was mine as well. And one I'd never have agreed to. Never in a million years. I knew you wouldn't. Then why did you do it? I had to. Oh, for Christ's sake, is that all you can say? Yeah. Well, is it the thought of, of, of living with me, bringing a baby up with me? Is that, is that it? No, it's not personal. Not personal? You just killed my kid. How can it not be personal? It just isn't. Well, what is it then? It's the only thing I can think of. It's the only thing that makes sense. Well, to a normal person, anyway. I'm not insane, Mike. Well, it was a bloody insane thing you did. Oh, you, you had everything going for you. And the kid. Oh, I would have worshipped that kid. Would have had a lovely house. Money, no object. You either. And then you had to go and destroy it. Like... Well, like some sort of vandal. I, 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 I don't understand. Will you listen to me? Please? Listen to you? When all you can say is you had to do it, you bloody well didn't have to do it. It was... 
It was criminal. You murdered my kid. It was my child. I was having it. I was the father. Oh, yeah, you were the father, all right, because Mike Baldwin had decided to settle down and raise a family. What a transformation. What do you mean, transformation? What about all those years when you never wanted children? You never gave it a second thought. All those years birdied it, when we were just a big joke, somebody to have a laugh and a giggle with, somebody to score with. That's what you called it, isn't it, Mike, scoring? You treated women like dirt. And then suddenly, suddenly it's the breeding season. I told you once before, Mike, I'm not a brood mare. <laughs> Nobody wanted you to be a brood mare. I just wanted a, a family, which is natural and healthy. And as for birding it, scoring it, as you put it, well, it takes two to score. And I don't remember any complaints from the other parties. Well, where are you going? There's no point, is there? You can just walk out after killing my kid. You're not leaving here until you tell me why you did it. I did it because I, me, Susan Baldwin, had no choice. Oh, there you go again. Put another record on. Listen to me. I married you because I loved you. I was crazy about you. And I'll be honest, I, I never thought of marriage as settling down, having a family. I thought I was marrying somebody who'd make my life more exciting, more interesting, who'd enrich it. You'd made it, you'd done something with your life. I hoped you could help me do the same. I didn't realise that that was the last thought on your mind and you never told me. We went all through that, you know. All through that about you wanting a career. I gave you every chance, every chance. I even staked you, and it was you, it was you said we'd have a go at having a kid. You said it. I know. I shouldn't have. You promised me. The minute I knew I was pregnant, I knew I'd made a terrible mistake. Yeah, well, it was too bloody late then. No, it wasn't too late. I'd made a mistake. But I didn't have to go on with it feeling bitter and frustrated. What sort of a mother would I have been? What sort of a wife? What sort of a human being? Surely women are just as entitled to be reasonably happy as men. It's not our fault we're the ones who get pregnant. But if being pregnant isn't what we want, if it's going to ruin our lives, then we've got the right not to go on with it. And that's why I had no choice. If I was to be honest with myself and the baby and with you. And as far as you're concerned, I just hoped you might understand just a bit. When you killed my baby, you killed our marriage. It was a forlorn hope, Mike. Goodbye. An innocent life. You murdered it. And that's something I'll have to live with for the rest of my life. And it's something a woman can't do anything about. Oh, Deirdre. Oh, hi. Um, has Mike been in today? Into work, I mean? No, as a matter of fact, he hasn't. I don't know where he's got to. He hasn't even rung in. Oh, I see. Did you want him for anything? I can ask him to ring you when he does appear. No, it's all right. It'll keep. I'll go and get myself a sandwich. Eating on the hoof today. Again. <laughs> I think the storm clouds are gathering, if you ask me. Really? Oh, well, not Deirdre. Yeah. Mr. Baldwin and Susan. Something going on. <gasps> I wonder sometimes if there's any such thing as a completely tranquil marriage. No. <laughs> oh, thanks, love. Bye -bye. Good. Yes, love. I'm looking for Vince. Vince? Oh, Vince. Not another one. Oh, dear, the havoc and misery that fella leaves in his wake. Pardon? Just my warped sense of humour, love. Uh, Vince, lady to see you. Uh, back in a sec. A friend of his, are you? actually know him. Really? You've got the experience of a lifetime in store for you. Hi. Oh, Vince. Suits Vince, don't he? Thank you, Beth. I shall attend to... Um... Wendy. Wendy Farmer. Good Lord, love. I take it you've come about the advert I placed in uh, Martin's paper shop window. Yes, I have. And you're interested in the room I have to rent? Well, yes, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. No, of course not. I say you're exactly what I'm looking for. And what are you looking for? A lodger. 
And I'm looking for a room. I'm a nurse at Weatherfield General. Oh, you're a nurse, eh? Ain't it be great if we ever get confined to bed? <laughs> you never guess what Nicky's playing in the Christmas play at school. What? A donkey. <laughs> He's got three lines, all the same. Keyhole. Oh, fun <laughs> class. He's thrilled to bits. Really? Do you know, I played an old man in a school play once. I never said a word and I was still brilliant. Oh. <laughs> Will you take the bill out, please? Oh, yeah. Oh, what's new in the Mike and Sue megadramas? Oh, she's gone back home. He took her in his car this morning. Oh. You're disappointed, aren't you, Hilda? No. I've got far more important things to do than worry about other folks' sordid little affairs. Well, aren't you going to ask me what? What? Well, Dr and Mrs Lowther have only asked me to supervise their removing for them to this country cottage they're retiring to. See that everything's packed proper and that. Oh, they have come to rely on me since I went to work for them. You know what that means, don't you? I mean, you will be doing all the hard labour. They'll just stand about and watch you. Not at all. Mrs Lowther said she wanted somebody to help who would appreciate her treasured possessions as much as what she does. Somebody who could recognise and respect quality when she sees it. Which means you'd never qualify for a job like that. If you ask me, you deserve that, Mrs. Robert. Well, she's all tittle-tattle one minute and then airs and graces the next. Honestly, marriage is a delicate enough flower without the likes of her pulling all the petals off it. Hello, love. Hi. I let myself in. I hope you don't mind. Don't be silly. This is your home. Always will be. I've left him. But to be honest, he's thrown me out. Oh, love. What happened? He wasn't... Uh... Violent. No. He didn't mince his words, though, which was to be expected. He didn't understand at all? No. Did you think he would? Not really. But like I told him, there was a small part of me that was hoping for a miracle. After what you'd done... I don't think she needs reminding no, of that. No, Deirdre's right. What I did was the finish for Mike and me. It was the only possible ending. So what are you going to do now? Well, oh, stay here, obviously. No, Dad, I can't. Not even if I wanted to. It's, it's too near Mike. It's too near everything. I'm going to Cheryl's. She's asked me up there. I'm going tonight. Well, surely you can stay for a few days. I mean, you're not well enough to travel to Newcastle. I made it from London. I can make it to Newcastle. Well, I'll drive you then. No, I'd rather go on my own. Honest. I've been in enough trouble as it is. There's no trouble. But I think she'll be all right on the train, Ken. I will. Cheryl's meeting me at the other end. You can drive me to the station if you like. Why don't well, you even have a cup of tea or a meal? The train's in half an hour. Oh, I wish you'd stay. You look so exhausted. Ken... Just drive her to the station, love. Look, Susan, I'm not saying I approve, but I do respect your absolute right to do what you did. And I'm just so very, very sorry that it had to come to this in the end. If I'd listened to you in the first place, it wouldn't have, would it? Bye, dear. Goodbye. I'll keep in touch. See that you do. Uh, I'll take that. So, what do you think, then? It's not bad. There's a smell of paint. Yeah, well, like I said, I've been painting, haven't I? Well, it doesn't exactly match the orange wallpaper, does it? I, I, yeah, well, it, it's supposed to clash. It's very trendy. And I've seen better views. Yeah, well, old Bert Gregory over the back doesn't always stand in the backyard with his vest and underpants on making rude gestures, but... I don't know. It's not really what... It's very cheap. How cheap? Well, I was thinking, like, ten quid a week. Is that all? Yeah. So we see how things work out, like, you know. Ten pounds? That's very cheap. Well, considering uh, all the extras, huh? Hello, love. Uh, this, is, this is Wendy. I've, I've just been shown at bedroom. Oh, have you? Hello, Wendy. Hello. Uh, this is the wife. Wendy's very interested in our accommodation, you see. Didn't... 
matter of fact, you think you're going to take it, aren't you, Wendy? Well, at ten pound a week. But just for a try period, to, to see if we can go all get on, see if we can all live together. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, love. It's been taken. What do you mean, it's been taken? The room's been taken. I might be saying no room at the inn. Well, not this inn, anyway. But perhaps Vince can uh, find you somewhere at the Rovers. Got a lovely cellar there, do we know? Aren't you, Vincent? Well, what a waste of time this has been. No, 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 hang on, hang on. That, that's the first I've heard about this room being taken, and I decide who moves in here. Well, it's not going to be me. Actually, when I look at you closely, I think I've had a very narrow escape. Your eyes are too close together. You sweat a lot. And it won't be long before you're standing in the backyard in your vest and underpants making rude gestures. Goodbye, Vince. And a Merry Christmas to you, darling. Give your mother my love. The house full of black cats and bats. Well, that door banging show, not very well brought up, is she? Wendy. What's all this about that room being taken? Oh, that's right, then. You never consulted me. No. Who is it? Hey, I've got us a nice pizza for us to take. Look. I said, who is it? My mother. Your mother-in-law. Well, if your mouth drops open anymore, it'll drop right on your toes. Oh, who's that at this time? Holy me! Oh, hello, Kevin. Hey, Sally asked me to drop this book off before I went to work. Oh, that was nice of her. Oh, The Prisoner of Passion. That sounds good. I like a good read. Yeah, well, she said, have your hankies out, because it'll have you crying by page four. <laughs> she knows what I like, does Sally? <laughs> Oh, hey, it's a follow-up to Love's Captive, this. Mm. Not that I'll have time to read it today, though, cos I'm off to the Rovers in a minute. And as soon as I'm finished there, I'm going to get down to Baldwin's. And straight after dinner, I'm going down to the Lowthers. I tell you what, why don't you tie the yard bus to the back of your coat? Then you can sweep the street while you're rushing about. <laughs> no, well, I'm helping the Lowthers to pack their things up, you see, cos they're moving the end of the week, you know. After they've gone, I'll have plenty of time for sitting about doing that. Well, that's what you want at your age. What do you mean, at my age? <laughs> no, well, I like to keep busy. And it's not just the Lowthers I'm losing, you know. Baldwin's are looking for house around Derbyshire away. Yeah, well, he's moving in the Lowthers. They might want a cleaner. Oh, they might, yeah, but I don't think I'd be suited. I've met her. She come round to measure up to see if there was room for her dining suite last week when I was in the house. I didn't take to her. Turned out in conversation that her husband was a butcher. Well, I wasn't surprised. I mean, Mrs. Lowther's a perfect lady. Well, of course, her being a doctor's wife, but... Oh, this one, what's taking the house? No, I thought to myself, I don't fancy working for you. Put all your fur coat and crocodile handbag. Why? What's wrong with her? Well, you know me, Kevin. I don't like to speak ill of anybody, but... Well, to be quite honest, she put me in mind of Vera Duckworth. <laughs> don't think I don't know why you agreed to have a woman lodger. Because you're a dirty pig. I know how your mind works, you. You'd have been hovering around on landing every time she took a bath, I know you. You've got a mind like a midden. I agreed to have a lodger, yes, but I didn't agree to have your flaming mother. Well, that's what she'd be, a lodger like any other. Oh, no, 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 because with a lodger, I wouldn't get treated like dirt in my own house, which is the way your mother always treats me. Oh, give over. She thinks a lot about you, my ma'am. She likes you in her own way. Funny way of showing it. What about that old dog she had, eh? That, that prince. She trained that to bear its teeth whenever I went near it. Now, I know that for a fact, because she used to give it an old sock of mine, split it, snip it, and then belt it. Look, she were all right when she had Prince, but then when he died, well, she were, she were lonely all on her own. How would you think you'd feel if you were all on your own? I'd love it. When could I start? Oh, straight up, Jack. She is lonely. She's had hard life bringing me up on her own, you know, since my dad slung his hook, I used to say to her. What's it like, my dad? She'd just like that bloke you're married to her, right, Torag? Oh, yes, she likes me in her own way. Yeah, but she's only kidding. And she's my own flesh and blood, Jack. I mean, well, she needs company. Right. You tell her to stop wearing she is, and I'll buy her a budgie for Christmas. Hello. Oh, hello, Emily. <laughs> well, look, just sort it out, will you? Well, I don't know. Just uh, do whatever you think fit. No. No, I won't be in the day. Bye. Uh, would you like a pot of tea and a bit of toast? I don't want anything. Just get on with the cleaning order. 
Mrs. Baldwin's gone away again then. Only when I was doing the bedroom, I noticed the things that was there last time I was here, they're not there now, like uh, things of Mrs. Baldwin's. Hilda, yeah, just mind your own business, will you? Oh, I know it's none of my business, Mr. Baldwin, and I'm not one for poking my nose in, you know that. Only I know she took some stuff when she went to visit her friend, but, uh, well, now everything's gone. Hilda, yeah, enough, just leave it. Whatever you say, Mr. Baldwin. Only I'd just like to say that if you hear any talk, it won't have come from me, that's all. Or they can ask me straight out if they want to. But if they say to me, Hilda, is Mrs. Baldwin at home or what? I shall just say no comment. For the last time, Hilda, give it a rest. Very good, Mr. Baldwin. Only I can see you're upset. You're upset, him, Hilda. But if you want my opinion, you've no need to worry, you know. I mean, at her age, they feel they've got to throw a little tantrum every now and again, don't they? You have a bit of an argument and it's like the end of the world. I know it's childish to such a... All right, Hilda, you wouldn't be told, would you? OK? Here. Take it. What's that for? What, I earn a couple of quid on top. Now get out, you're fired. Is that good enough? Can you understand it? I was only trying to I help. don't want your help or anyone else's. Oh, well, if I'm not wanted, I'll... I'll just finish... You're cleaning. finished now, Hilda. Now get out and leave me alone, will you? Oh, there you are, man. Get yourself sat down. Get your strength back. Oh, these corporation bus drivers aren't shooting. I said to him when I first got on, give us a shout when we get to Rosman Street, I said. Anyway, I thought it were Rosman Street. But he never said nothing. Well, they never do. They want shooting, taking your past your stop. But it was this woman. Soon as we set off again, she hutched across and tapped me on the knee. Excuse me, she said. Didn't you want Rosman Street? Yes, I said. Well, she said, that were it where we just stopped at. Hey, don't you get her, eh? You great duck egg. I said, why didn't you say so much sooner? I didn't like to, she said. I think she came from down south. Talk like that anyway. And she looked half daft. Anyway, you're here now. Oh, did I shut the kitchen window? I can't remember shutting it. Mind you, round there, if they want to get in, they'll get in. Smash your windows soon as look at you. You see, the sooner you get shut of that flat, the better. When you come and live here, you'll, you won't have them worries. I'm not getting shut till I know I'm welcome. I'm not coming when I'm not wanted. But you know you're wanted. Well, where's my laddo, then? I thought you said he'd be putting the welcome mat out. Well, he's at work, isn't he? Or he'd have been here. Work? Stood in that pub, you mean. Got what he always wanted there, didn't he? Getting paid for standing in pubs. It could be the reincarnation of your father, he could. Anyway, look, I'll make you better dinner. Cheese on toast, do you? Oh, all right, go on, then. I bet he doesn't want me to come and live with you, does he? Oh, our Jack. Look, you know what he's like. He don't know what he wants, so I tell him. <laughs> hey, you want to see what he's done to your bedroom, though? It's on your wallpaper, new paintwork. See what he thinks, see there? If he thinks I'm going to let him go and collect my pension for me, he's got another thing coming. She's out of order, though, isn't she? Trying to bring the mother into the house. What's she like, Vera's mother? I tell you, if she lived in India, she'd be sacred. Oh, give up her. Have you not met her? Yeah. Well, she'd been over here a time or two. She's quite nice, myself. At least you can have a laugh with her. You wouldn't love her, you clapped eyes on the first thing in the morning. She looks like Boris Karloff after a busy night in the graveyard. Face like a busted boot when our Vera's going the same well, way. Well, Vera, you've said that, Jack. Too late, Ivy. I've told her myself. Mind you, it's right what they say. Women do go like the mothers as they get older. Aye. Any young lad who's courting should study the mother, you know, because that is more or less what he's going to end up waking up next to in a few years' time. God, I wish I'd have studied our Vera's mother when I had a chance. Yeah, I could say, Mum would want to wake up next door to you any road. You were never much of a catch for a lass. I was. All the girls chased me. Oh, aye, how come it was Vera who drew the short straw then? What do you mean, short straw? What's our Vera been saying? Ah. Hello, Hello, Hilda. Got a warning for you. Me, Mrs. Ogden? Yeah, and all them girls across the road and all. Just keep your heads down when uh, Mike Baldwin's about, cos he's in a firing mood. Fired me this morning, just like that. What the hell have you been doing to him, Hilda? Nothing. Only a sympathetic word in his trouble. Well, I wouldn't have said anything, only after what he's done to me, I don't feel I owe him nothing. That wife of his has left him. Oh, I know she's done it before, but this time I think she means it. All her stuff's gone. Is this right, Deirdre? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Well, of course it's right. You don't think I make these tales up, do you? Don't take the off, Hilda. Here. 
This is on the house. Now then, I want a blow by blow account. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, I knew there was something wrong with Mr. Baldwin. He's not been in again this morning. Has Susan really left him? For good, I mean. Yeah. It'll not be patched up this time. I'm sorry, Emily. I can't say any more. Oh, no, no. I, I understand that, Deirdre. I wasn't fishing. I knew he'd be upset, but judging by what Elder says, I... Well, I... I think I ought to go and see him this afternoon. Is that wise? Oh, I don't know. But I think I should, whether it's wise or not. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. I was at the hospital a moment ago and thought, why didn't I stop on my way home? Offer you a lift. Oh, that's very kind of you. Come on through. Uh, take a seat a minute, Doctor. <laughs> I'd, um, I'd offer you a cup of tea on the, uh, I dare say you want to be off. Well, I can't say I look forward to any of the business of moving house, Mrs Ogden. And I'm in no hurry for the dreadful ceremony of the packing of the tea chests. <laughs> a cup of tea might uh, stave off the evil moment... Very nicely. Right, it'll not take me a minute. <laughs> like I say, you've only just caught me. Only had to put my coat on, then I'd have been off for the bus. Well, saving your legs, Mrs Ogden, can be my good deed for the day. Oh, you've always been very thoughtful, you and Mrs Lowther. It's been a pleasure cleaning for you. Not like some I could mention that I've worked for. Who's that? It's Deirdre. What do you want? I just want to talk to you. Let me in, Mike, please. Okay. Okay, but you're wasting your time. I'm finished with her. You can go back and tell her that. That's not why I came. Do you mean to tell me she didn't send you here to try and persuade me to take her back? Nobody sent me, Mike. Because I would never. I wouldn't touch her with a ten-foot pole if she went down on her knees. Look, nobody sent me. I just came to see how you were coping. <laughs> well, obviously you know what happened. Of course you do. Of course you do. Because when I slung her out, she went running to her daddy and stepmom, didn't she? But do you know the full strength, eh? Do you know everything? Yeah, I know about the... Baby, if that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah, the baby. What baby? There isn't one. She got rid of it. She killed it. Look, Mike, I know how you must feel. No, you don't. Neither does that bitch. Otherwise, you couldn't have killed my kid. Maybe she, she did know what I'd feel. Maybe she'd know what, I'd, what it'd do to me. God, she must hate my guts. She doesn't hate you, Mike. She... She just thinks she made a mistake. You both did. Oh, I made a mistake, all right. Look, I can understand you being bitter. I'd feel the same way as you do, believe me. Oh, I'm not here to defend Susan, but if you could just try and understand, she didn't do what she did lightly. To her, it just looked like the best thing to do. To her. <laughs> she killed our kid. Hers and mine. I didn't think you'd go along with that, did you? Just trying to get you to see how it looked to her. Can you? I mean, he'd stick by her. He'd stand by her against me, whatever she did. <laughs> but he's celebrating. He is not, I can assure you. That baby would have been his grandchild, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know that drink? No, thanks. Don't you think you ought to take it a bit easy? Well, so I can stay fit and live to a right healthy old age? What for? For a son I don't have anymore? You don't know what it would have been, Mike. No. No. Not this time. 
not this time. I had a son once before. Maggie Dunlop took him away from me. And now that bitch Susan... Mike, you should go back to work. I'm, I'm sure it'd help. You ought to go into the factory. Oh, the factory can go down the pan for all I care. There's just no point anymore. There's no point. You are, Vera. Vera? God bloody, I thought we had a house full of burglars. Burglars here? If they wanted out worth taking, you'd have to bring it with them. You give me a right flaming start. What do you want? Oh, that's the trouble with you. You don't take enough, I, Vera, tells you. You were drunk, I dare say, when she told you. Oh, you just dropped in as you pass in, didn't you? What time's your bus? Oh, bought a pie with you, have you? Yes, and that's my dinner. I've not a chance to eat. I've been working that hard. You've sucked enough. I can smell it from here. I've had to test the barrels, Amy. Well, our beer always thinks you're a right ale can. But I say to her, leave the lad alone. There's worse than him. Eh? Oh, yes, there's a lot worse than him, I say to her. Of course, I've lived a lot longer than her. Seen more. She doesn't remember Hitler hardly. But she shouldn't keep calling you. Thanks, lad. What for? You've done a right good job on that bedroom. I felt at home the moment I walked in it. But, Amy, the last thing you want to do is lose your independence. The fact is the worst mistake you can make at your age. What is? Losing your independence, that freedom to do as you want, come and go as you please. Aye, aye, I need a front door key. How did you, but you'll miss all your mates, all your old cronies from Russia, won't you? Dead, most of them. Are they? Aye, I'll soon be joining them. You won't have to put up with me much longer. It won't be long before I'm taken. Mm. You could be right, Ma. You could be very close to it. Oh, it's a nice little statue, this. I've always admired it when I've been dusting. It is quite old. Oh, yes, I know. But they could be just as nice as something new, I always think. You'll be careful to wrap all those bibs and bobs carefully, won't you, Mrs Ogden? Joe would be heartbroken if she lost any in the mood. Oh, don't you worry. I know what Mrs. Lowther thinks a lot about her pots. Well, same as me. Do you know, I've got some ducks on my wall I wouldn't part with for a gold clock. Sentimental reasons, you see. Come to me for me, Aunt Aggie. Yes, I think I've noticed them. I used to trail up there on the bus, week in, week out. And there, Selwyn never went near, and they only lived two streets away. That's her brother there, Selwyn. My Aunt Aggie used to say, don't worry, Hilda, you'll be in the will. And I was. She left me them ducks. No more than you deserve, Mrs Ogden, I'm sure. They're sewing cut for all her furniture, and they've not been near her for donkey's years. Mrs Ogden, I wonder if any of these will be any good to you. I've been having a thought out. I'm not taking them to Hartington with me. I just won't have the wardrobe space, for one thing. Oh, I say. I think they're more or less your size. But don't think you have to have them. Oh, no. No, I'd be very pleased to have them. Oh, this is beautiful. I've only worn that once. That was at that dance at the town hall. Do you remember, Bob? Bliss. No more dances at the town hall. I can't wait for Hartington. A bit of peace and quiet. You wouldn't think we'd been very happy here, would you? I'm sure all your patients are going to miss you, Doctor. Well, I shan't miss them. I only see them when they're feeling sorry for themselves. Uh, the only thing I'll miss, Mrs Ogden, uh, your cups of tea. I think that was a hint, Mrs Ogden. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I think we all deserve something stronger. You will have a glass of sherry, oh, Mrs Ogden? Thank you. That would go down very <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. Well, here's to Hartington. Well, Hartington, I hope you'll both be very happy where you're going. And I'd just like to say, it's been a real pleasure working for you. Oh. Cheers. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 I think I'm going to go and have a word with Emily Bishop. What about? About Baldwin. See if she's heard any more. I won't oh. be a minute. Okay, hello. 
Who's this Baldwin, then? Not Baldwin, we were boys all mouth and trousers. So how did you go on with our chat then? Uh, what the hell could we have? He said he were worried about me. Worried? He didn't want me to lose my independence, you see. Uh, what did you all say? Well, I said you were out of the house all day. You were out of the house half the night. I had plenty of time to be independent. <laughs> you did right. <laughs> Just look at them, like a couple of vultures. They each other on, you know. She's worse than Vera, the mother. You know, Summer, when Vera was a little girl, if she would have a poorly at school, the mother used to send out of the school for Vera's bottle of milk. Dead cheeky, I call her. Strong-minded Jacko, a woman has to be. But he's right, then, this tale that's going around. She has left him. Well, apparently. Oh. Well, even so, that's no reason for him to turn his back on factory. He was murdered this morning. None of us knew what we were doing. I tried ringing him several times this afternoon, but the line was engaged every time. Well, Alan Bradley is very worried about Mr. Baldwin. Rita was telling me. What's he got to be worried about? Well, they're quite good friends. In fact, Rita was saying he was thinking of going around there, cheer him up a bit. Oh, sooner him than me. Hey. <coughs> Blimey, mate, you look as though you've been giving it a bit of a bashing. Listen, I've been trying to ring you every time... <laughs> well, no wonder I couldn't get through. The phone's off hook, did you know? Anyway, uh, sort of pop round, see how you are. So now you see me. Fancy a drink? Uh, not at the moment, thanks, no. Listen, why don't you come back to our place and have a meal with me and Rita? Nah. Nah, I don't fancy going out. Come on, might cheer you up a bit. Why don't you have a quick shave, shower, change your shirt, eh? Make you feel a lot better, you know? Look, will you stop trying to organise me? You can have that drink or not. Yeah, go on, man. I'll keep you company. <laughs> that stuff is not the answer, you know, Mike. Although I dare say, in the circumstances, I'll be getting plastered myself. Under what circumstances? Well, we heard the news about you and Susan. And I'm sorry, we both are. But you never know. She might come back when she had time to think things over, eh? If she tried to come back here, I'd kick her down those stairs. And anyway, who told you? Oh, I know. Yeah. Ilda Rugden, I suppose. Somebody told Rita, I don't know who it was. So it's definitely finished, is it? Finished and good written. Well, what can I say? It's a lousy experience, I know. But look at it this way, Mike. Better it should end now than later, eh? Huh? Well, what I mean is, there's no kids involved. Look, See, just get out, Adam, will you? Hey? Just get out! I don't want you coming round here trying to cheer me up and putting your two pen at well, I just oh. want to be left alone. All right. If Hilda knows, we can take her the whole street's in the picture by now. Yeah, well, looking on the bright side, I'm pretty sure she's only got half the picture. I mean, she knows Susan and Mike have split, but that's all. She doesn't know about the baby? Well, it wasn't a baby, was it, Ken? I mean, it... Yeah, well, look, don't split hairs, love. It would have been a baby. It... Oh, well, I don't want to get an argument about that. Do you think I do? Anyway, to get back to what I was saying, I am positive that neither Hilda nor anybody else knows about the... All right, the baby. I mean, they didn't even know Susan was pregnant, did they? Mm. She wouldn't let Mike tell anybody. Well, I hope they never do find out. Mind you, no doubt Baldwin will soon be telling the world and his wife the full story. I doubt it, Ken. Not the state he's in. You've seen him? Ah, uh, yes. Where? Well, I, uh, I called in. You went to his flat? What the hell did you do that for? Because I felt sorry for him, damn it. I still do. Look, Ken, I know the way you feel about him, but he was married to your daughter. He still is, come to that. You shouldn't have gone anywhere near. The man is suffering. I've seen him, I've spoken to him. It's really it him. If you must know, I don't think he should be left on his own at present. Look, you shouldn't have gone to him! I certainly don't want you going there again. If there have to be any further dealings between this family and that man, I'll take care of them! You leave Mike Baldwin to me! Morning, Ivy. Oh, morning. Crack 
lucky you're an early term when you're shopping, aren't you? Well, I thought I'd better get a few bits and pieces while I've got the chance, because if we're going to have another day like yesterday... Oh, don't say that, Emily. I mean, none of us quite knew what to do without Baldwin, did we? Yeah. Mind you, when he does finally show his face, you know, get blamed if hope goes wrong, don't you? You and me. Still, I can't help feeling sorry for Mr Baldwin. It must have hit him very hard, Susan walking out on him. I feel very sorry for Mr Baldwin as well, but all right, you have it to get on with, haven't you? Mm. I mean, a lot of people's living depends on that factory of his. He's going to have to get a grip on himself, Emily. Vera? Oh, what's this? Oh, come in, love. I won't be a minute. I'm just putting my face oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, morning. Why, you're an early bird, aren't you? I'd still be in my bed, me, if I ain't got to go to work. Oh. I've been awake hours. Never got off after half past two. Hey, it's a noisy beggar, that lavvy of yours. Oh, that'll be hard, Jack. You know, it won't be told. Really? You see, you kept my mother up half at night, you're using that toilet. What the hell did she expect me to use? I'm a damn sight more to complain about me use someone else. Look, that'll do. If you didn't sup all that ale, you won't have to go. Hey! What you doing, man? Get it outside! Yeah, that won't harm you. It's only a pigeon. Have you no more sense to bring a bird in your house? That's bad luck, that is. Bad luck, I've plenty of that. I married it. Hey, I heard that. Well, you don't go for this superstitious rubbish, do you? I'll grant you, first sleeping 13 to a bed might be bad luck, but apart from that... <laughs> ah, you can be laughing now, but you won't be laughing when you bring bad luck in your house. But say, you're upsetting me, ma'am. Do you know you're just like my ma'am you are? She'd never have a bird in house. She wouldn't even have a turkey at Christmas. How can that be unlucky, except for the turkey? Look, never mind. Stop upsetting me, mother. You're doing it deliberate now. I will use the toilet in the night, as often as I want to. I'll bring me pigeons in the house whenever I feel like it. And if I want to, I'll start keeping vultures. Come to think about it, I've been keeping one of them for years. Now I'm going to be stuck with two. If your mother doesn't like it, then she doesn't have to stop, does she? Ooh. Hello, Hello, Hello. Yes. Is it uh, Ken you wanted to see? Uh, well, both of you, really. Oh, hello, hello, Ken. Hi. Hello, Tracy. Hi. Uh, just uh, wanted a quick word, you know. Oh, uh, Tracy, isn't it time you were getting ready for school, love? Go and give your teeth a brush in. Yeah, OK. All right, what is it, Alan? Sorry, I didn't want to say anything in front of the youngster. I didn't know whether she knew about your Susan or Mike Baldwin. Well, she knows they split up. Oh, well, I'm even bothered then. No, it's just that uh, I was round at Mike's place last night and uh, he's in a pretty bad way, you know. He's taking it very hard. Oh, dear. I told you he had. What, uh, what did he say about Susan? Well, he was putting the booze away like there was no tomorrow. I tried to get him to talk about it, but he just flew off the handle and told me to get out, so I left him to it. But uh, I'm just a bit worried about him, that's all. And I thought, um, thought I ought to let you know. Well, thank you very much, Alan. Right, well, I'll... Uh, I'll let you get on then. So that can. Yeah. Bye bye, love. Bye -bye, love. <coughs> Why come to us for God's sake? Probably just trying to be helpful. Well, does he think we're going to rush round and hold Baldwin's hand well, or something? Perhaps he does. Look, Ken, he's married to your daughter, and whether you like it or not, you and me are the closest thing he's got to family. Oh no, not anymore. And as far as I'm concerned, we never were. Look, love, you've got a kind heart and it does you credit, but there's nothing you can usefully do. You just stay well away from my border. No, she's probably got a loaded mousetrap in there or something. I've been giving your pigeons some cornflakes. Why, oh, are they good birds, them pigeons, Amy, good birds. You know that omen in instinct that they have, birds. Us humans have it and all, you know. That impulse to get back to your own home, I bet it's welling up inside you, isn't it? That yearning to get back to your own little flat in Russian. Oh, it's always been a cold hole, that flat. Can't warm it, so what you do? You've got green mould on the bedroom walls, you know. Ah, uh, you're homesick, I can tell, love. Have you been at my handbag? Just shifted it, that's all, just shifted it. I don't keep my money in there, you know. Oh, I secrete it about your person, do you? Good plan, good plan. 
be a brave fellow who fancied searching for that. <laughs> You're not going to work, or what? No, the pub doesn't open for an hour, half an hour. Old. See that cellar done? But yuck, it's a Bobby's job, is that? Give us a look at this paper. Get off, woman! You're only reading the sport. Give us the front time. You can have it when I've done. If you want a paper, go and play me buy one. I've heard a piece of paper, Bill. She's told me many a times. Go on, give us the front time. I am trying to do my selections. Oh, still chucking your money away on the horses, are you? It's a wonder to me I've here ever kept this place going. I don't know why she married you. You what? What? I married her. Aye, that was all your flaming doing. You going and snivelling and crying to me, Dad. Your Jack's got our beer in the club. What's he going to do about it? Well, it's only fair. You'd had your pleasure. Aye, and by the hell I paid for it. Wouldn't mind if she was in the club. Flaming false alarm. Ah, the oldest trick in the book, innit, that, eh? The only way some women have got of catching a good lad. A good lad? You? I don't know why she bothered with you. She could have done well, could I, Vera? She could have been a ballet dancer. Excuse me, are we talking about the same woman? She could, a ballet dancer. Soon as she could walk, she'd be dancing about when the wireless were on. Or if she got too tall, that's what stopped her. Too tall, eh? It's amazing what a couple of inches will do to your life. Bullios! Oh, come on in. You're having your dinner. We just come round and see if you wanted to go down the road. and have a bit of dinner with us in there. Ah, oh, well, it was a very nice thought. Only I'm having my dinner early, you see, because mm. I'm off to the Lowthers in a minute, helping them to finish packing for the removal. Ah, oh, still, it was very kind of you to think of it. Sit you down, there's tea in the pot. Oh, well, yeah, I don't want to put you off your grub. No, no, I've finished, really. Mm. Oh. Actually, the reason that we wanted to see you was, um, well, we were in the Rovers last night and, well, somebody said that that Mike Baldwin gave her the sack. Yes, he did. Just like that. No class, you see. Different to the Lowthers as tripe and treacle. I don't care how much money he's got. He'll never be what I call a gentleman. Oh, yeah. No, no, don't want to be nosy like, but... Oh, you're going to go on for money now, like, you know, like, with the Lowthers going and now this with the Baldwins? Oh, don't you worry, I'll manage all right. No, when you're known for professional cleaning, there's always work going. And I never reckon working for Baldwin, you know. No, it was no pleasure cleaning for him. A gentleman doesn't keep his desk locked, not in my opinion. <laughs> Do you know, I can't get over him firing you, though. I thought he really liked you. Yeah, well, to be fair, he's got his troubles at the moment, what with his wife having left him. Of course, I wasn't surprised, you know. Well, I knew it couldn't last. Not with him being old enough to be a father. <laughs> what, two of you? What is it, some kind of, sort of a deputation? No, 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 Mr. Baldwin. It's just that I thought I'd best come with him, Mr. I mean, I have tried to phone at least half a dozen times. Yeah, well, all right, you're here now, aren't you? Get to the point. Well, we wouldn't have come round bothering you, Mr. Baldwin, only we're at our wits. Yeah, I know you've here. already said that. Get to the point. We've run out of denim, that's the top and bottom of it. Emily has been searching for supplies, but they said Friday, and that's if we're lucky. And we're supposed to have finished Atkinson's order by and we, Friday. And we can't, because we haven't got the class. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. Can't you, uh, get the girls on those, uh, cotton skirts? At least then they'll be working. Well, we can, but what are we going to do at Atkinson's order? Oh, don't worry about that. I'll get on the blower, rustle up some denim. In the meantime, do as I say, put them on the skirts. Right, then, Mr. Baldwin, I'm glad we got that sorted well, out. Well, is that all you can uh, no, say, there's, then? No, there's uh, these checks, Mr. Baldwin, I... and they ought to go off, because I've had... All right, all right, I'll take your word for it. Mr. Baldwin, uh, don't think I'm talking out of turn, but there's all sorts of sorting out at the factory. We've only mentioned the really... All right, I'll get the drift, Ivy. I may come in tomorrow. Well, I was wondering... Mr. Out Baldwin... the pair of you, before I change my mind and close the flaming place oh, down. Right, right, thank you. Ken, well, he's not saying much, but uh, he's not very happy. Oh, he's here now, love. Do you want a word? No. No, all right, love. Right, well, you take care. Yeah. Bye-bye, love. Bye. Hi. Hi. Mm, that was uh, Susan on the phone. Oh, yeah? Sends her love. How does she seem? Tired, a bit weepy, but she wants to get herself a job, so... Apparently, she's uh, left this folder behind at the flat. It's got 
job references in it, exam certificates, that sort of thing, you know. So she needs it. She was um, thinking of ringing Mike up and asking oh, well, him to I post them. Yes, I told her it was a bad idea. Good, good. I said I'd go and get them for her. already told you, Deirdre, I don't want you going there. I feel very strongly that you shouldn't set foot there, ever. But she needs those things, Ken. I'll get them. Oh, come on, Ken. You know what you and Mike are like. It's asking for trouble. You peer at each other's throats. Let me do it. No. I'll go. <laughs> fiddling with my bag this morning, went out into your yard, and not been gone two minutes. When I got back, he'd been at it. I could tell. Well, is it all missing? I don't think so. Oh, except for a boiled sweet I'd wrapped in a bit of paper. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah, well, I meant to tell you, never leave your handbag hanging around in our house, not when our jack's about. How are you liking Coronation Street, love? Settling in, are you? I think I should be suited. Do you know, it amazes me how anybody could want to live in the same house as Jack Duckworth. I don't know how Vera manages it. Do you mind not calling me husband? Do what? Nobody calls him more than you. Yeah, well, I can. I'm entitled. I'm married to him. She deserves a medal. She could have had our pick, you know, our Vera. There was many as fancied her. Hey, you remember Eddie Kingsley, don't you? Mad about Vera he wear. Well, what about him? He got one over last Christmas. Saw so his wife in a fur coat on Mosley Street. She sold the shop and she got compensation for him being run over. You see, that could have been you if you'd listened to your mother. Well, I think Jack and Vera suit one another. I do, really. In fact, it's a good job they found one another. Because they'd have spoiled two other couples, wouldn't they? She's got a lot to say, hasn't she? Cheeky trollop. Yeah, she'll say too much to me one of these days and she'll know about it. Anyway, come on, I'd better get shifting. Oh, well, I'll walk with you. Right, love, come on. Hi. Over. You see me mum, Peter? Oh, she went with Emily on a mission to sort Mike Baldwin out. Thanks. Come on, oh, love. Pipe, please, Bet. It's more than flesh and blood can stand, Bet. Mother and daughter in the same house. I'm outnumbered. Outsmarted. The old woman's half potty, you know. Oh, not her. She's got all her chairs at home, hasn't she? For a start, she's got you weighed up. Yes, love. Well, uh, I have the small sherry. Small sherry, Jacko. Have you seen Emily at all? Oh, she's gone around Mike Baldwin's, apparently. Oh. Alan Bradley went round to see Mr. Baldwin last night. Oh, yeah? Mm. Well, from what Rita told me, he told her Mr. Baldwin was very upset. Well, I dare say maybe. he would be, maybe, it's his wife leaving him. Mm. But why did she leave him? I mean, there they were, all ready to move into a nice new house, and suddenly oh. she's left him. Maybe there's somebody else involved. Oh. Well, you never know these days. You know, we could do with Hilda Ogden here, couldn't we? I mean, she generally knows what's going on, do not she? Yeah. Hilda, I don't know what I'd have done without your help. Moving is such a business. Oh, Stanley, you'll be all right once you're in your new home. Yes, I'm looking forward to it, really. It's worth the effort. Hartington's a lovely village. Do you know it at all? I can't say I do, no. Uh, Derbyshire, isn't it? Our travel lives in Derbyshire, you know. Chesterfield way. Oh, no, we're more the southern end. Dubbell, you know. Beautiful there. Dr Lowther loves that part of the world. It's about time he was taking things easier anyway. Well, so should we all. Oh, uh, will you want the curtains taken down, Mrs. Lyle? Oh, no, no. Mrs. Harris has taken quite a fancy to them. As a matter of fact, Hilda, I rather get the idea that Mrs. Harris would like some help with the housework. Now, I could mention you, if you like. Oh, well, y you could do, yes. A couple of days ago, I would have said no, thank you, but, uh, well, money does come in handy, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, I shall certainly tell Mrs. Harris she couldn't find a better cleaning lady. Thank you. Yeah. Well, do your best, won't you, mate? Yeah. Look, I've got to go now. There's uh, someone at the door. Uh, OK. Yeah, see you. Uh-huh. Bye. Oh. Well, you better come in.
Susan asked me to call. She uh, left something behind, apparently, some sort of folder. I think Deirdre said it was in a drawer somewhere. Oh, yeah. There you go. That says. Help yourself. Do you want a drink? No, thanks. Well, to say one thing about you, father-in-law. You don't waste your time or mine making hypocritical noises about, uh, I'm sorry it's come to this, which I'm glad about. Because I'd hate remarks like that. Especially from you. you no danger of getting any. You always did your best to ruin our chances, didn't you? Sue and me. Well, you finally got what you wanted. Your daughter did you proud. I don't think there's any point in this conversation. Goodbye. Knows how to stick the knife in, doesn't she? That daughter of yours. What is it? Chip off the old block? Learn the art at a very good school? She cut you up as well, though, didn't she? It was your grandchild she got rid of, yes. She's a lovely girl, your daughter. Beautiful smile. You must be very proud of her. Well, I'll just say this. Don't try to kid yourself or anybody else that you're the innocent victim in what happened. Oh, I thought I'd get the blame. So it was me who got rid of the kid, was it? Susan didn't want to have your child, did she? You badgered her. You pressured her into getting pregnant. If she didn't want children, she shouldn't have got married. And you pressured her into getting married in the first place. The biggest mistake she'll ever make in her life. But spare me all this self-pity, Baldwin, because you're to blame for this whole sorry business. I just wish to God she'd never set eyes on you. Because she's going to go through life carrying a whole load of guilt for what's happened. That I do know. I told her when she first met you that you were a load of poison and nothing has happened since has changed my mind. Now you look... So there's no connection between us anymore and if it had been anything to do with me, there never would have been. In the future, just stay away from my family. On. What are you doing? Don't mind them, me. I'm thinking. You haven't time to think at your age. You should have done that when you're a lass. Oh, well, twist then. I think I've bust. Well, of course you bust. What do you want to twist on 17 for? Well, you got me flustered oh. brushing me like that. Hey, is that him? Aye, that's him. What? 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 What's all this? Who are these two? Friends of mine. That's Tilly and this is Alice. Who's this ale? You buy your own ale. You know that pub on the corner? He works there. And the miserable beggar hasn't put his hand in his pocket since I got here. It's <laughs> not so much as half a mile. Now, oh. see here, I'm not having you turning this place into an old fallen granite. And I'm putting up with no more of your nasty remarks, neither. So you can tell your mates to pick up the broomsticks wherever he parked them and clear off. And if you don't like it, you can go too. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, Tilly, what you doing? Sticking. Hard luck, because I've got pontoon. Let's have your money, girl. Did you hear what I said? This is my house, and I see who comes in it. It's our beer who keeps this house going, and our beer who pays the bills. He never gives her a shilling, hardly. It's our Vera's house, is this? She said to me, he wants a lodger, she said. I said, a lodger? Well, you've got one already. Him. Hilda, you needn't clean the silver. Oh, well, I've always liked polishing these. Just thought I'd give them a last rub up for you. We bought them in Bath just after we were married. They were the first really nice things we could afford. Yeah. Well, there you are, then. It's the last time I'll be polishing them. I've been going through the garden furniture and find that uh, we have two identical lawn rakes. God knows why. Would a lawn rake be any use to you, Hilda? Well, not much use in my backyard, Doctor. <laughs> ah, no, I suppose not. Well, I'm famished. Sure you are. Joan, we ought to feed Hilda. Oh, no, no, don't trouble yourself on my account, Mrs Lowther. Mrs Lowther won't be trouble. I'm going to get in the car, drive down to the Willow Garden and return with half a dozen Chinese dishes. How does that suit you? Oh, well, I don't know whether I like Chinese food. Be daring. Venture into the unknown. Oh, go on, then. I'll try anything once. <laughs> Half an hour. Warm plates.
Hang on. Give him a chance to get away. There you go, boss. What is up with you tonight? You've got a face on you like a gas man's Mac. Is something troubling you? Do you need a bigger size in jockey shorts? Is it something I've said? No, I've got no complaints about me working life. Is not wrong with that. I suppose I could say the same about me flaming home life. Yeah. Talking about your home life? Here it comes now. <laughs> what are you having, kid? Oh, okay, there's a lager here. I'm jiggered. Two lagers. Who are you talking to? Two lagers. The cat. No please, no hello, no thank you. What do you think I am? <laughs> well, I'd be frightened to tell you, kid. I get bad for using bad language. What's up with you? Your mother, that's what's up with me. I went home this afternoon to get a nice quiet kip and she's turned the house into a witch's picnic. All her old mates there supping ale and playing cards for money. Well, so what? She wants some pleasure her time alive. Well, then she starts giving me a load of earache, doesn't she? I'm like a foreigner in my own home. What's all this about handbags? Well, what about handbags? Well, as soon as I walked in, I mate started jumping up and down, grabbing the flaming handbags. Well, I don't blame him. Look, it's you, you're up my mum up wrong way. If you were right with her, she'd be right with you. I have made every effort. I have been niceless personified with that woman. Are we having a drink or Yes, what? we are having a drink. Right, Vera, I have asked you, I have begged you, now I'm telling you. Either your mother leaves the house or I do. Now, I'm not bothered, it's up to you. But you have got to make your mind up who you want living with you. Her and me. He's left the door open and all. Let's make it quick. Hey up. There's somebody in. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You're not taking them candlesticks! Ah! Shut up! They don't belong to you, give them me! Get out of the way, you're back! No. I said get out of the way! Come on! Come on! And still piping hot. Oh my God, Joan! <sighs> Mrs. Arkin, God in heaven. Come on, quickly breathe. Breathe. That's it. Joan. Please, God, no. Joan. Don't. Please, God. Contraption. Don't you fret, I know what I'm about. I have a system. Did she get gambling money not supplementary? <laughs> I'll tell you what, if she'd have been born up Mississippi, they'd have christened her Gaylord Burton. And another thing that gets on our Jack's win, rag, pumpto, waste, the old lady can murder him. <laughs> Ma'am, are you coming for this sale? Because we're going after this one. Oh, wait on. They're all fixed, them things. But I'll soon get the hang. And then buy a cow can it. <laughs> Is she kidding or should Alec be told? Yeah, well, he's away in jury land, isn't he? 
destroying the morale of the troops. Mind you, if Amy does get a, a good run there, there'll be no whooping her back of and changing the clockwork. Hold hard, sir. How dare you come in here in your trilby hat, a slandering of honest folk. <laughs> How's the tour going, anyway? Well, he made one big mistake. He should have taken Percy I won the war Sugden along to handle public relations. Oh. Yes, <laughs> Is he keeping in touch, anyway? Yeah, he rings the most days. All right, check it on the till, like. So, not entirely, but I think he works it in somehow. But he does, <laughs> Same again. Uh, no, thanks. Let's not get a round started. We all cops out for a quick one, didn't we? Well, the plan was to quicken Jackson's chip it and then back to our hovel to count our candle ends. Hello, I'm calling the local for social drink and blow me a start getting softened up for a pay claim. Who mentioned pay claims? Kevin, you take some a bigger wage packet than I do. Yeah, tell me another. Hey, Vera, what's up with your Jack? You went down last cellar about half an hour ago. I hope the rats haven't got him. Oh, hey, a big soul, kid, big soft kid. Hey, ma'am, shift yourself. It's ice down at seven, you know. Oh, hang on. What's up? It's there, Jack, isn't it? Turning nasty with that sweet poor old soul over there. He's <laughs> threatening to leave home if she stays. I mean, I know he's all gob and he drowned his conscience in a pipe hot years ago, but even little couldn't do it to be like kicking Mother McCree. Oh, <laughs> Behave! Great money gobbling lump! Oh, oh, so here we are, eh? The fast crowd. So where's oh. the leave up then? We're well, a respectable married <laughs> couple, you know. Yeah. Try to bingo off. Heard the talent down there is fantastic, man. Yeah. What is your pleasure, my little swamp duck? Yeah, pint of bitter, please. I've just come down Bolton Road on the bus and there's been a big burglary or something. Police cars all over the shop. Hey, there's always something for somebody, isn't there, look? Mm. Okay, get us a coronary care. Straight on, straight on to coronary. It's an attack. She's still unconscious? Yes, certainly. Right, okay. Round. Unconscious, Heaven. Still at it? You will never get to town, have a meal, and still be in time for flicks. Sorry, for what can I do? Oh, I didn't expect to see you still here. That there is a customer. What are you doing down here, anyway? Come down to pinch some sweeties, have you? Look, anything eh? I take from this shop after hours is mentioned and paid for. Now then, Riley, don't get your tights in a twist. It's only joking. Yes, I know that, but still, I mean, if I can't come down to find something to read without being got at... A confession. The phantom pearl loiner of women's magazine stands revealed. But on the other hand, Mavis, if you are spending the night indoors... I it's no good trying to get round me no, now. No, seriously, if you're not going out tonight... Well, who said I wasn't? I might have a date. I might be going to some trendy disco. Oh, come on, love. We're running late. If you could just hold the fort. Yeah, just until she's finished. Mm, well, I suppose... Oh, you're a little cracker. What are you? Well, don't you push your luck. Ah, oh, we're ever so grateful, and I'll see you round. And take your pick of the videos. Oh, thank you very much. You know very well I haven't got a machine. Thank God you can come. It's been terrible, but... Is Colin with the boys? Colin's at a staff meeting. I've left the boys. Mark is 16. Of course. Silly of me. I thought I had to telephone you. I should think you did. Joan is my only sister, after all. How is she? Well, luckily, if that's the word, uh, she wasn't attacked, but uh, our cleaner, Mrs. Ogden, she took the brunt of that situation. Poor woman. Yeah, she's an X-ray now. She may have a fractured skull. And by the time I arrived on the scene, she was practically choking. Why the hell wasn't I there? Why don't you get a blasted takeaway? What's wrong with beans on toast, for God's sake? I know it sounds irrational. You did all you could. At least being a doctor, you were able to help. God knows what Colin could have done. A headmaster. <laughs> if this Mrs. Ogden was choking, you probably saved her life. Well, that remains to be seen. I do take it that Joan is out of danger. Well, she's comatose and uh, stable. But given her heart condition and the trauma, I'm afraid it's... Go. Dr. Lowther, the police have managed to contact Mrs. Ogden's son in Chesterfield. They found a number in a handbag. Unfortunately, he's away on business and his wife can't leave the children. 
Bless you. I was wondering, is there anybody that ought to be told, given Mrs. Ogden's condition, that might be able to visit? I don't know. Uh, uh, let me think. Um, um, there was a young chap who lodged with her. Uh, Kevin somebody? Do you have a number for him? No. But he lives over a little shop in Coronation Street. Uh, the one they call Robert's Mini Market, I think, these days. Right. Well, we'll see what we can do. Is there any news? Not really. But uh, if there's any change... All we can do, Helen, is wait. Well, there must be a tea machine. I'll see what I can rustle up. Can't you see we're shot? Who is it? Ladies, please. It's Derek. Oh, Derek. It's raining. Oh, I'm getting wet. Oh, oh at last. Oh, you'd never come. It's pouring oh, down out there. For heaven's sake, if you had a free uh, night and you wanted to see me, why didn't you call? Look, we can't talk here. Let's go upstairs. Oh, upstairs? If there's somebody there, then, Mavis, you must tell him to go. I don't want to seem arrogant, Mavis, but honestly, I'm so charged up. I, I just don't know whether you should. You mean there is somebody there? No, of course there isn't. Who would there be? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like ordering a new carpet just so the carpet fitter will call. Oh, look, Mavis, I know I've neglected you recently, but I'm practically a prisoner. Angela hides the car keys. She's been kicked off the committee at the golf club for swearing at the professional, and it all lands on my back. Night after night of torture, Mavis, the bedroom's become a battleground. As for home comforts, look, can we please go upstairs before I collapse? I need... I need tenderness, Mavis. Oh. I don't know, Derek. I mean, isn't it some sort of therapy that you want? I know exactly what I want. I've not been married to Angela all this time without knowing what I want, or rather what I'm missing. Oh, look, can we go upstairs now? I'm falling apart, Mavis. I'm cracking up, and I'm very wet. And I need gentleness, Mavis. True feminine gentleness. Oh, oh Derek. Well, I suppose... If you put it like that. Oh, thank you, Mavis. Well, let's not hang about. It's getting chilly. And we can be seen from the street. But once in your little haven of warmth and companionship, we can be as men and women should be. A blessing to each other. Me. Mr. and Mrs. Webster, is it? Yeah, that's right. I'm Mrs. Ashcroft. Mrs. Lowther's sister. What's happened? You don't know? Oh, all we know is Hilda's been attacked since she's in casualty. Well, seemingly there was a break in, and Bob, that's Dr. Lowther, well, he'd gone out to get some chips or something, and when he got back to the house. It wasn't in the street. We thought it was in the street and she'd been set on or something. Knife to summit. It's not that bad, is it? Well, that depends. Apparently, Mrs. Ogden suffered a fairly severe blow to the head. What about Mrs. Lowther? Because that's what I suppose she only left for, isn't it? Well, Joan's in shock and, of course, she has a heart condition. But other than that, apparently, she doesn't appear to be harmed. What did he be hit her with? Please think that she was violently pushed, fell and hit her head on the table. Police are involved? Yes, they're here. They've talked to Dr. Lowther, and of course they're hoping to talk to either Joan or Mrs. Ogden. Hello. Uh, it's bad news, I'm afraid. Not Joan. No, Joan is responding to signs of improvement, but... Uh... Mrs. Ogden. She's, she's not... But she's still in considerable danger. There's a head wound, respiratory problems, concern about chest infection. Add all these together, plus Mrs. Ogden's age, and they thought it best to put her into intensive care.
Never there when you're flaming well need him, is it? Well, unless he sniffs a wind for all the summer. Sure it'd be a Kevin Irving now. Oh, yeah. He'd not rush himself. Well, we're no relation. What we're going to do, you know, it's regard signing the papers and all that. Oh, don't worry about that. If anything happens, he'll be here like a shot. If I want to find out what he's got in the will. Sure, it's fucking okay. now. But what a face it will. Hilda's on the free list. Don't put people there for the fun of it. Excuse me. I have to go now. Are you staying on? Or can I give you a lift? Uh -huh. Thanks. That's OK. We've got transport. I just thought if one of you wanted to go. You want to go, sir? No, I'm a sticky tongue. Perhaps if you sat with the doctor. He's very tired and only just coping. Anyway, we can but hope. Pray. She didn't stop long. Shall we move over? No, I'd rather stop on our own. I don't know his type of fault. Just hope didn't seem to bother Hilda. No, because she just accepted all that. Come on. When you come from a good family like I do, you have to be careful you talk to. Do you, uh, mind if we sit here? Of course not. Well, I don't see how anything's changed, Derek. I mean, I've heard all these tragic stories before. And quite honestly, I think you've got a cheek bursting in here just to take me on yet another guided tour of this battleground you call a marriage. Well, what did you think I'd burst in for, then? Anyway, I've hardly started. I am living in the middle of a horror movie, Mavis. There have been scenes in that bedroom... Oh, please, Derek. There's a limit to what I can take. You won't have the heating on. She hogs all the covers, and now she's got this poodle. Goes berserk if I wear my silk-striped pyjamas. My dear mother, God rest her soul, gave me those pyjamas. Plus, it's not house-trained. And the carpet is... Well, it's, it's, it's like going for a walk in the Lake District. Oh, what do you want me to do about it? Take it for walkies or something? Appear in your lounge, pretending to be a lamppost. Maybe. That's coarse. That's Angela language. Well, I'm sorry, Derek, but I'm rapidly running out of sympathy and patience. I mean, if things are as bad as you pay, well, why don't you leave the woman? I have left her. I beg your pardon. I've left Angela. The marriage is finished. I don't believe you. It's the truth. Cross my heart. <laughs> Yes, it's the truth for tonight, but then you'll go crawling back. Mavis, is that how you truly see me? An unscrupulous womanizer, here for a few stolen moments of guilty passion? Well, not exactly, but I mean, I am at your mercy, aren't I? I mean, well, I'm risking my good name by allowing these nocturnal visits. Believe me, Mavis, this is the end of a chapter. I've burnt my bridges. And soon I'll be a free man. It's all very welcome into the end of chapters and burning bridges, Derek. But have you actually told Angela? <laughs> I came home this evening after a hard day. I mean, these days you have to move fast in the stationery business. Angela's gone off to the amateur drums. She's playing Lady Macbeth. She landed the role against strong opposition. Chief contender went down with food poisoning. Anyway, she's doing her thing at the village hall. The poodle's going wild in the bedroom. There's not a scrap of food on the table. My odious stepson, Neville, the walking sneer, is playing darts in the kitchen. I made two attempts at the fridge and was told to get out before he pinned me to the wall. I thought enough is enough. I sat down. I wrote a farewell letter, spelling out my reasons for leaving and stressing there would be no coming back. And then I walked out of the house and into the rain. My marriage is finished, Mavis. The die is cast. Irrecably... Ir ir Irrevocably. Cast. Jack ordered a flyer, has he? Yes, yeah, stealing a march on his mother-in-law, I reckon. Uh -huh. <laughs>
There might still be some fun yet. If she gets back from bingo and finds a bed out in the street. He won't do anything. He's all mouth and trousers. I wouldn't fancy his chances anyway if he started with a rough stuff. Now then, this will be Alec. How are you, my angel, and have you cashed up yet? <laughs> Actum, mein Führer. Who? Kevin? From where? He's ringing from hospital. Oh, no. Is it serious? Kevin? Kevin, are you on your Todd? No. Uh, sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Tell you the truth, it's, uh, it's getting to it a bit. Yeah, it could be a long time and all. We, uh, we just wondered if there was anyone there. Well, if it's gone closing. No, the, uh, the hospital reckon, you know, it's, it's good to have someone here with it all the time. You know, somebody close, like. Kevin, hold on. I'll see you. Gloria. Hmm? Didn't Martin Platt say something about a break-in down Bolton Road? Yeah, he did. Well, that was Dr Lowther's house. Hilda were there. She's been clobbered. Right now, she's in Weatherfield General, and she's practically on free list. Oh, I don't believe it. Her precious son, Trevor, isn't available, so Kevin and Sally are there. God, he's in a right state. Well, should we go? Well, it's little enough. But dare I leave the pub? I mean, it might be an all-night job. In fact, we can only pray it is. Well, I'll go then. Look, I know you would, if only for Hilda's sake. And so would I. But as her employer, I've got a duty as well. Failing Trevor, what she got by a cat. I'm going, and if the brewery find out, they can lump it. Well, listen, I'll stay here if you like. Are you sure? Oh, go on, I'll be all right. You're a good one. Listen, what if Alec rings? Tell him Vets run off with a tinker, but the takings have been terrific. He won't even notice. Not him. Well, that's it then. Coffee goes right through you, doesn't it? I, I must say, I admire your taste in hand towels. Now, where did I put my coat? I did have a coat, didn't I? Yes, it, it was wet, if you remember. I, I put it on the bedroom radiator. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Where will you spend the night, Derek? Oh, I'll find somewhere, I suppose. Park bench, station waiting room. Might even walk the streets until daylight. It's still raining, you know. What's a spot of rain? Mind you, it's a pity you don't have a spare room, but, well, I won't wash away. You don't have to go. Don't I? I'm not driving you out in that stall. Aren't you? No, I think there is room. But I, I know I've only got the one bed, but if you are prepared... Wouldn't it be a bit of a squeeze? Derek, how dare you? I'm not suggesting that we share. Oh, of course you weren't. Never crossed my mind for a no, moment. What, what I had in mind was the settee. That is to say, you on the settee and me here in my bedroom. Absolutely. I understand. Perfectly. Oh, oh Mavis, what can I say? Except that your kindness itself... Oh, no, please, no. We must keep our distance. I mean, one touch and the fuse could well be lit. Yeah, sorry, sorry, pardon. My, my intentions were totally pure. I dare say they were, Derek, but, I mean, if we're to spend the whole night together, well, you're a married man with a married man's needs, and I have to be extra careful. Mavis, I swear on my dear mother's grave, you'll be safe. I will make it through the night without bothering you. Apart from hmm? perhaps a glass of milk before we retire? Oh, yes. Well, as long as that's understood. <laughs> I'll, um... I'll just get you blankets and things. Wait, wait, wait. Any changed doctor, any imprudent doctor. And so often there's... There's nothing to say or it's too... disheartening to say it. 
They would tell us, though, wouldn't they? If there was no chance. If it was simply a matter of time. Yeah, they might. It depends. But I don't think this is the case. I... I left them cleaning silver, for heaven's sake. Is it wrong to have silver? Is it asking for it? Any news? Uh, give me a second, I'll check. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Your husband's been stitched. You can see him now. Ward 14. Thank you. We'll be in. Any change? She's gone. Oh. Do you want me to tell them? That's okay. I'll, uh, I'll just take a minute for myself and, uh, I'll break the bad news. I'm sorry, Bob. The second attack was massive. She was too weak to take it. Yes. I understand. Look, I'm off home shortly. Stay here if you'd like some time to yourself. Thank you. No. I find it difficult to take me. Would you like me to run you home? Excuse me. Yes, she's still unconscious, but she's stable. Will she pull through, Doctor? Are you her daughter? No, just a friend. It was a serious blow. We've done a brain scan, and there are no blood clots, fortunately. That would have complicated things. As it is, we shall just have to wait and see. I'm sorry, Bob. Something's come up. I just have to... And of course, don't worry. Is there anything I can get you, Doctor? You know there's a tea machine, don't you? Thank you. I wouldn't wait around for Mrs Ogden, you know. There's nothing you can do. Ring in in the morning, see what progress there's been. Excuse me. Is it normal for people to be unconscious this long? They're monitoring a progress, don't worry. talk to you. Oh, um, just a minute. Uh, enter. It won't open, Mavis. Uh, no. had to lock the door against me? No, I must just have done it automatically. That saddens me, Mavis. I thought we trusted one another. Yes, we do. I, I do. I mean, I, I just must have done it without thinking. I didn't mean to lock the door. I didn't want to. What did you want, Derry? Well, I couldn't sleep, Mavis. Oh, neither could I. And I got to thinking seriously. Seriously, Mavis, about what I'm doing. Leaving Angela, etc. And, well, I realised it's... It's not only Angela I have to think about, is it? No. No, Mavis. I also have to think about myself. I mean, it's all very well my leaving a note to say it's finished, but when it comes to it, that's the coward's way out, isn't it? I have to live with myself. I have to look back on tonight and say to myself, did I, did I behave with honour, Mavis? Oh, yes, she behaved with honour, Derek. But did I face her? No, I did not. I need to feel... I need to know that I've behaved like a man. Yes, a man. I mean, it's no good hiding behind a note, hiding from her anger. I have to face it. Her. Don't I? To her face. Oh, yes. I mean, don't I? 
You know best, Derek. And when it comes to it, it's either man or mouse, isn't it? And, well, if, if ever I thought of myself as a mouse, well, I, I'd throw in the towel there and then. <laughs> no, I'm going home now, Mavis. And I'm going to face her. Tell her it's over. Finished. I've had enough. If she wants me, she can whistle. I am not a mouse. <gasps> what? What's that? Shh, shh. Oh, my God. It's not her, is it? How could she know you were here? Oh, no, no, of course, you're right. Well, who is it, then? I don't know. How should I know? There's just somebody at the door. Oh, That's my God, this I is know. awful, awful. Well, don't just lie there, Mavis. Do something. Oh, oh don't look. Well, um... Oh, oh, oh Derek. I, I, I can't stand it. Who can it be? Well, just keep calm, Mavis. Keep calm. Oh, oh too many extraordinary oh. things happening here. Well, see who it is, then. Well, why don't you? I might be seen. Oh, so might I. Well, don't you realise, if it ever comes out I spent the night here, I have had it? Oh, what about me? What about you? Oh, yes, what about me? What about me? It doesn't matter about me, does it? Now be careful, Mavis. There's nobody there. You sure? Whoever it is must have gone. Oh, what a relief. If Angela had known I was here, she'd have killed me. I thought you were leaving, Angela. I am. Oh. Yes, I am. You just can't be too careful, that's all. Let me out now, Mavis. Clear? Yes, I think so. Good. Right. Well, wish me luck. Oh, yes. Well, will I see you again? Soon, soon. I'll be in touch. Hmm? Oh. Bye-bye, Mavis. So that's why you're not answering the door. I've got my rabbits to feed before school, you know. Come on. There was me papers. Intensive care? Yes, it's Mrs Gilroy again. Any change in Mrs Ogden? Is that normal? Oh, thank you. I'll try again later. <gasps> Don't do that. Sorry. Thanks for holding the fort last night, kid. It were gone too this morning when I got back. Must be worn out. What's the news? I don't know. But whatever it is, I don't think it's good. Oh, come on, Bert. What's happened? Well, now! I mean, they don't tell you much in hospitals, do they? Well, she's not in danger, is she? Well, we don't know, do we? She's still unconscious. That's hours she's been out now, glow hours. She's been out over 12 hours, you know. I know. And, I mean, with what happened to Mrs Lowther? It gets you worried, doesn't it? What happened to Mrs Lowther? She died, Glow, in the early hours. Oh, it were out. She'd had trouble, apparently. Oh, Bert. I was with Dr Lowther after they'd told him. He must have had to do the telling himself a fair few times. It didn't seem to make it any easier. It's murder, then, isn't it? I don't know, Lord. God, but you just can't believe it, can you? I mean, who'd do a thing like that? Two helpless women who can't hit back. This to make you feel there's nowhere safe in the world, doesn't it? Right, that's uh, 12 pence change. There we... Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. McAlsa. If it... It's ten pounds you gave me, will not it? That should get old cricket if I were you, love. Before she takes any more money off you. Oh, well, that was very amusing, Alan. Thank you. Well, not what I said. By it, Riley. You look as if you've had a right good night of it. And what's that supposed to mean? Oh, I see. One of them days, is it? Well, if you'll tell me what you're trying to say, I might be able to answer you. Well, all right, Mavis. Your face looks as if you've been mopping floor with oh, it. Oh, thank you very much. Well, you are love. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but I'm in no mood for sarcasm this morning. I've barely slept all night, so if my face looks like that, I'm not surprised anybody's would have had the sort of night I've had. Why? What's happened, love? Oh, you'll only be sarcastic. Guides on her, Mavis. I won't say a word. Will we, Alan? No, of course not. No. Well, it's no laughing matter. It was very distressing. Oh, I'm sure, love. Well, what happened? Derek stayed the night. Mavis. Alan, get the champagne now. <sighs> See, you are being sarcastic. It's not like you think. He, he was stuck for somewhere to sleep, so I, I said he could sleep on the sofa and his intentions were entirely honourable. Oh, what a shame. Oh, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. You just make light of everything. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, if he slept on the sofa, how come you had such a bad night? Well, I just couldn't sleep with his presence there. I mean, and worrying about his wife and, and what people would think. It was awful, Alan. Well, what was he doing there? Well, he's... He's leaving his wife. 
To live with you? Oh, no, of course not to live with me, Rita. Don't be so silly. Well, I'm sorry. I'm totally lost. Oh, well, Derek has decided that there's no future in his relationship with Angela. And from what I've heard, I, I must say I agree. But it was very courageous. He wrote a note and he just left, just like that. Very determined. Well, I, I wasn't going to see him walk in the streets all night, so I said he could sleep on the sofa. But then I lay awake all night. I was just getting off when he knocked on the door at six o'clock this morning. What did he knock for, love? Well, he had to get back. Why? To see his wife. I thought you said he'd left her. Oh, will you listen, I Rita? I am listening. I am listening. Right, well, he decided that it was very cowardly just to leave a note like that, so he decided he ought to go back and face her with it in the cold light of dawn, except that it was darkness itself outside anyway. Just got to the door when Wayne Pickles came in to do his papers and he saw us. Oh, it was so humiliating. Mavis, love, why don't you go upstairs and get your head down for an hour or two? No. No, I'm not going to let my personal life interfere with my work. I can cope. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I can, so go on. Off you go. Up. Before I get Alan to carry oh, you. Up. Don't say that, Rita. Don't say that. <laughs> Give up. She's very poorly, so I don't want you stopping long. She will be all right, though, won't she? We hope so. Look, there's a policewoman with her now. And that's plenty for her to cope with. So, uh, if you just wait till she comes out. Excuse me? Yes? Does she know about Mrs. Lowther? No. And I don't think you should tell her just yet. Get all you wanted? Well, I have an idea what happened. Two of them. Yous. But I think she's had enough of me for now. I'll come back later. You can go in now. Thanks. I won't stop long. Been playing football again, eh, Chuck? Hello, Bet. No. They've told his wife, Hilda. They've got through to her. Would he be coming? He's away on business, Hilda. Oh. He's always very busy. Yeah. Listen, Hilda. The nurse says I've not got to stop long. So I'm just here to tell you that Everything's being seen to. Kevin and Sally are looking after Ronald. Ah, oh, bless him. And Alf sends his best. He brought me. That's good of him. But the main thing is, you've not got to worry. You've got to get some rest. We need you back in that Rovers, girl. Will, will you tell Dr. Lau that I'm sorry? Hilda? We couldn't stop them, that. They were too much for us, me and Mrs. Lowther. Shh, Hilda. Don't get upset, love. How is she? Who? Oh. Mrs. Lowther. I should just get some rest, Hilda, love. I hope it didn't hurt her at all. Don't worry, Hilda. Honest. Just try and get some rest, love. Mm. I think that's long enough for now. Yeah. I've got to go, Hilda. But I'll be back tomorrow, kid. Thanks for coming, Beth. Hi, she is back oh. from the land of Nod. Oh, I feel better for that. There's nothing worse than knowing that you're short of sleep, is there? It, it sort of puts you off for the whole day. 
wonder if Derek's suffering. I shouldn't think so for a minute. If they hadn't invented the gun, would they have invented the video? Well, you don't have to buy them. Yeah, but it's what the public wants, isn't it? You've got to cater to your market. There's no point in being business otherwise. I suppose that's what Sweeney Todd thought. Yeah, but I mean, they want other things as well. The bromance section does very well. Mm. Mm. Killing and kissing. Just about sums it all up, really, doesn't it? Men's comedy. True, maybe. Oh, hello. Hello, Derek. Everything all right? Yes, thank you. Yes, very good, in fact. Things couldn't be better, as a matter of fact. Uh, did you want to see me? Well, I haven't come to buy writing paper, maybe. I didn't think you had. <laughs> maybe. Why don't you take Derek upstairs? Oh, would you mind? Not at all. Then he can get it off his chest. Oh, Will you like to come through? Yeah, I can't stop long. Taking an early lunch. Do you think we're gaining a lodger? God forbid. Do you really think he's left his wife? Who knows? But I tell you this, it's all going to end in tears. And they won't be his. Alf took Beth this morning, but she was only allowed a few minutes, you know. Looked in an awful state, Beth said. It's going to be very hard for her, isn't it? I mean, if she gets over it physically, it's all going to be in her mind. She won't get rid of that very easily. It really shocked me, Ken. It affects everything, doesn't it? I mean, so much good about it, yet when something like this happens, all you see is the bad. Yeah. And if you're alone at night, you've got time to think about it. Yeah. You're not worried, are you? Of course I'm worried. Well, you don't think whoever attacked Hilda's going to come and get you, do you? Oh, no, I don't, but... Well, it makes you think, doesn't it? Right, that toothpaste, curl that frozen. But if this is what Baldwin's going to be like without it, you can bring him back any day. I know he ran me ragged this morning. Do you even shout at a tenner? Did you hear him? Oh, I that were a laugh. See, Miss Perfect cop for a lug full. Do you know, Summer, this is what he used to be like in olden days. It's just that we've forgotten. No, this is the real him. He's just gone soft with marriage, that's all. <laughs> Stop it, dear. So do you think she's gone for good then, Susan? How the heck do I know? Well, serves him right. Cradle snatcher, rat dirty I've old man. He's been on to the hospital. Hilda's on the mend, and that's official. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they say they're pretty sure there's no brain damage. Oh. That's a relief. Sealed her off with brain damage. Ah, she's bad enough already. Vera! Was she very angry, Derek? Not at all. You mean she agreed to a separation you came to some arrangement well mavis a lot of water has passed under the bridge since this morning when i left here i was determined to go home and face her wasn't i oh yes you were very determined Derek. Mm, i was well on the way home i got to thinking and i said to myself Derek, i said you're a grown man can you honestly sacrifice everything you've worked for just for the sake of a gesture Derek? can you pass me a biscuit well what happened Derek? well if I'd left Angela as I intended, where would I be? Without a home. But no job, no car, no pension. <laughs> That's the trouble when your father-in-law is also your boss. Not all wine and roses, you know, Mavis. What happened, Derek? Mm. Well, what happened was, I got home and found the note unopened. She'd obviously come home from the amateur dramatics and gone straight to bed. So I tore it up and put it in the bin. I'm saved, Mavis. Saved. Pension, job, car, everything saved. So you didn't leave her? Yes, I did. Left her forever. But the funny thing is, she never knew. This calls for a celebration, Mavis. If I didn't have to get back to work, I'd take you for a drink. Is there any more tea in the pot? Gone for good, is she? I'm sorry? I've just been telling me mum. Down at the factory, she reckons Baldwin's walking around with a sore head. Well, I know that she'll be back before the week's out. Hey, maybe if you've got some inside information, we could make a bob or two. You find that amusing, do you? What? Well, it may surprise you, but I'm not keen on my daughter being the subject of factory gossip. As far as I'm concerned, if she's ever stupid enough to go back to Baldwin, she'd deserve everything she got. So we are spoke. Now then, you two. We're not stopping for a drink, but we just came in to see if Mrs. R was still in the intensive. Yeah, she is, love, but improving. Oh, well, should we take her anything? Grapes are out. Just take yourselves. I just found Rommel on Rosamond Street, looking as though he's going to throw himself into traffic. Flaming murder looking after somebody else's cat, innit? Oh, you want to keep him shut in? Well, he's got to go out sometime, hasn't he? Well, I'll give him his head. He'll end up in the next bed, so he'll do. Come on, Kev, we're going to be late. Yeah, see ya. See you, back. Give her our love. Hey! Hey! Now, you're not to tell her about Mrs. Lowther. It could set her back. And what if she asks? Well, change the subject. We won't let you stop long anyway. Oh, okay. See you later, Jack. See you now. What were they like, them hot pots? Oh, they're not as good as Betty's. They don't make them right nowadays. 
I put a lump of fat the size of a golf ball in. Gives you winter warm. Mm. What's wrong with your Jack? Is he ailing? Why? Said not one word to me all morning. Sat with his pigeon paper picking his teeth. Mm. Well, don't worry about him, ma'am. He's quiet sometimes. You know, silent time. Oh, I don't worry. The quieter the better. I'd be happy if he never opened his face. Well, you're getting us a drink, Harvey, or what? So he tore up the note and that was the end of it. She never knew. The last of the Red Hot Lovers. Well, you can see his point, Rita, can't you? I mean, he'd have lost everything. Well, why didn't you think of that in the first place before he wrote the note? Oh, I think it got to the end of his tether, Rita. I think it had all got too much for him and he just acted on impulse. I feel sorry for him because whichever way he turns now, he's either got Angela or nothing and he doesn't want either. You are a mug, Mavis. You are. And he's taken you for a mug all the way down the line. When I think what he put you through last night and all for what? He's no intentions of leaving Angela. He'll never leave her. He will, Rita. Will he, yeah, cos like. And if you've any sense in your head, when he comes through that door again, you'll have him turn round and walk right out again. He's got nobody else to turn to. No, and I wonder why. Oh, you are hard on him. He needs somebody to be hard on him, does that monkey. And if he comes messing my staff about again, he'll hear about it. You see, that's been his trouble all his life. What has? Nobody understands him. It is good of you. Of course it isn't. The flowers are lovely. I like a nice croissant. Hey, there's a little shop just as she come in. Oh, they must make a bomb, mustn't they? And you've, you've, you've seen to Rommel then, have you? Hey, don't worry about him. He's no trouble at all. No. No, he's a good cat. Everyone sends the love, Mrs. Owen. They're all missing you. Even them the time, eh? Everyone. Hey, and you're not to worry. No, I know. Beth said. Oh, I tell you what, you're better off in here today than outside. Mm. Flipping freezing outside. Kevin, would, would, will you do something for me? Yeah, of course I will. Well, will you find out how Mrs. Lowther is? Nobody seems to know in here. Why, why won't they tell me anything? I'm lying here and they all say don't worry and I'm worried sick. What's happening? Hey, come on, Mrs. O. Please find out, Kevin. Sally, this is someone you know. Is the Kevin? Yeah. Sir, it's bad news. Kevin. Well, tell me. She's died. Mrs. Lowder's died. Oh, no. Oh, Kevin. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ogden. It's all right, Mrs. Ogden. It's all right. Oh. <laughs> Let's get the nurse care. No, no. Oh, it's all right. I had to know, Sally. What about Dr. Lowder? He's fine. He found you and he got an ambulance and that. It was a heart, see? Would be. Oh, poor Dr. Lamb. <laughs> now, just think on. I want that yard scrub before I get back this dinner. It's all right. All right. It's only a wash with flaming pigeon muck. It's nothing. Nothing? And I suppose this is nothing. Leave out, Vera, will you? I'm trying to have my breakfast here. Yes, and I could have broke the flaming neck, couldn't I? So I think on, get it scrubbed, right? I'm going, love. Right. See you later, love. Yes, yeah, see you later. So you're not taking her to the bus stop, then? Eh? I mean it, Vera. I am not living under the same roof as that woman. As soon as he packs her bags and opposite, the better I'm going to feel. But it's not that easy, is it? I'm only one she's got. Well, what about me? Do I not count for out in your life anymore? Look, just give it a bit longer, eh? You know, I'm sure things will work out once she's settled in. Settled in? She couldn't get any more settled in if she was quick-drying cement every time I turn around, you'd on my feet. 
Well, it's just that you're not used to having an house. I'm not used to having a gorilla in the house, Peter, but it doesn't mean I won't want luck. I mean it. I'm telling you, if she's not out of this house by weekend, I'm off. You haven't heard a word I've said, have you? Eh? I said you haven't heard a word I've been saying. Oh, I I'm sorry, I was miles away. I was telling you, veins. I've been a martyr to them all my life. Oh, yeah. What with them and me gallstones? It's been a right year, I can tell you. Yeah, it must have been. Still, there's always somebody worse off than you, isn't there? That's what I always say. Yeah, I suppose there is. I think you've got a visitor. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. I thought I'd just pop in, see how you're going on. Can't stop long, I'm afraid. Oh, she's eats better. Aren't you, Mrs Ogden? Oh, well, this is Mrs Gladwin. Oh. Gallstones. Pardon? That's what I'm in for. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll not be needing your paper for five minutes. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, here. Ta, love. Oh, thank you. So, how are you feeling? Oh, all right, I suppose. Only all right? Sally and Kevin said you were feeling so much better. Yeah, well, I suppose I am, but... Well, it's just... Just today, isn't it? Today? Mrs Lather's funeral this morning. I'm sorry, I had no idea. No, well, you wouldn't know, would you? Do you know, I can't get her out of my mind. I mean, there she was, making plans to move out to Derbyshire with Dr Lather. Looking forward to taking things easy, the pair of them. They had the cottage already. And now... Well, I, I still can't believe it's happened. I mean, she had everything to live for. They both did. Look, I know how you must feel about Mrs Lowther and Dr Lowther, too. And I can well understand how your thoughts are with them just now. But you've got yourself to think about as well, you know. You've got your life to get on with. Yeah, that's what Kevin and Sally keep telling me. And they're right. I mean... What's happened's happened, and we all regret it more deeply than words can say. But there's nothing anyone can do to change things, not now. So just you put your mind to getting yourself on your feet again and out of here. There are a lot of people missing you, you know. Tarlow, and we'll start deliveries tonight. There are. Hiya. Right. Uh, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, I've got a free period. So I thought I'd just your palm, see if there were any posts. And I take it there was. Is it that obvious? If you were any more excited, we'd have to get a fire extinguisher to put you out. <laughs> so how is he? Fine. Missing me, of course. Of course. That all? More or less. Well, it's not what he says, it's how he says. Oh. This is your French friend, I take it. Well, Patrice is a bit more than a friend, Mavis. I'd read you a bit of his letter, but I don't think you're ready for it yet. I don't think I'm ready for it yet, either. <laughs> hey, you'd have your ears going red out, it would. <laughs> have you ever read a letter like that, Mavis? Really steamy and torrid with passion. Hey, not this letter into a cocktail, I can tell you. <laughs> Are you going to go through every magazine in the shop doing that? Doing what? Well, just picking them up and throwing them down willy-nilly all over the place, because if you are, then I've wasted the best part of half an hour putting them all straight, haven't I? I'm sorry, Mavis. I didn't realise, Mavis. I'll put them back exactly where I found them, Mavis. There. Are you happy now? Pardon me for breathing. It's uh, nothing to do with you, love. No, and before you say anything, it's nothing to do with Derek either. I wasn't going to say any such thing. <gasps> Derek? Oh, what's the use? I expect she's told you all about it. I expect you've already had a good laugh at my expense. I never said a word. No, that's right. Well, come on, I'm waiting. Well, you'll wait a flipping long time, won't you? Now, did you come in for out special or just to tell us you got another letter from Passionate Patrick? Oh, you spoil sport. Oh, go on, then I'll have a packet of these crisps. Yeah, salt and vinegar will do. An apple will do you more good. Well, I've got one of them, and all. Oh, yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> see ya. I see. So that's the way it is. Oh, come on now, Mavis. I thought you would have known me a bit better than that. All I know for sure, Rita, is that having Mavis Riley for a mug seems to become a national sport all of a sudden. Well, yes, it certainly does in some quarters. 
When are you going to get it into your head that whenever Derek comes into your life, it means bother and disappointment? You will never understand, will you, Rita? I'm his friend. If he can't turn to me in his darker moments, who can he turn to? I understand you stuck your neck out for him. Gave him a bed for the night. A when sofa. You... All right, a sofa. When you thought he'd given Angela the elbow. And then he dashes off home quicker than he can say bed socks in case Angela finds out. Well, he's got his reasons, hasn't he? I mean, he's got his future to think of. His, his job, his company car, his, his pension scheme, his private health insurance. Exactly. That's our Derek, isn't it? Seems to have thought of everything. Except you. Stay up, see what the wind's blowing in. Alex, we weren't expecting you till later. Yeah, I know, I managed to get an earlier flight. Oh. Where's Bet? Oh, I'll, I'll get it. Good to have you back, boss. Good trip, I take it, was it? It was satisfactory, Jack, in parts. Ooh. Not that it's any of your business. Just asking, you know me, always got your welfare at heart. Oh, that's very, very nice. In that case, you won't mind grabbing the other suitcase. The taxi driver's just got it out. Uh, I have paid him. Alec? Bell, love. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to give me a ring when you got to the airport. Ah, well, I thought I'd surprise you, didn't I? So I grabbed a taxi and here I am. Do you know, if I didn't know you better, I might just have got the idea that you were checking up on me. Oh, well, it's a good job you do know me better then, isn't it? Come on, take it, you're stopping. Eh? What? <laughs> Wild horses wouldn't drag me back there, I'll tell you. I shall put the kettle on. Uh, do you know, that's just about the best offer I've had today, I reckon. Oh, I think I can improve on that. <laughs> no matter what people say, you know, and no matter how good the kids are, it still takes a lot of getting used to, doesn't it? Losing your husband. Yeah, I don't think you ever do. I know I never have. Every time I turn round, there's something to remind me. Daft little things, you know, like, well, buttons off his shirts in my sewing tin and the odd collar stud. Some little job he kept putting off. Yeah, I know. But still, we've got our memories, haven't we? I expect you've had more than your share of good times and all. Same as me. Oh, yeah, there were plenty of them. Plenty of the other kind and all. Still, we had some laughs over the years, me and Stan, God rest his soul. Like you say, we got our memories. That's something nobody can take away from us. All right, Mrs Ogden. Oh, yes, thank you. All right, Mrs Gladwin. Time for your injection. If you carry on like this, I shall look like a flipping pincushion by the end of the week. Well, that's just where you're wrong, because you won't be here by the end of the week. You'll be back home. Honest. Brownie's honour. Eh, uh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I was looking for a Mrs Hilda Ogden. But I must have got the wrong ward. I was looking for somebody much older. Daddy, what are you doing here? Well, that's a daft question, isn't it? Well, come on, watch up a little bit. There must be room for two in there. <laughs> <laughs> You thought I'd deserted you, didn't you, love? Only I bumped into Mrs. Presswich coming out at cleaners and she gave me a blow-by-blow -blow account of their Eric's abscess. All quiet. Yes. No phone call. Oh, meaning Derek, I suppose. Not particularly. I wouldn't have to ask if he'd phoned. You'd have been doing handstands. <gasps> Look, Rita, I know what you take me for. You've made that perfectly clear. It doesn't matter what I take you for. It's what Derek takes you for. Oh, all right, all right. You've made your point. Now, can we drop the subject? What's brought all this on? Well, I've been thinking, haven't I, about what you said, and, well, maybe I have made myself too, well, available. So, if you don't mind, I'd rather not hear any more about Derek. Huh. I mean it, Rita. If he was to walk through that door right now, I'd be hard-pressed to pass the time of day with him. Right now, if you don't mind, I'll go get my lunch. Hello, Kevin. Oh, it's you. No, I'm sorry you can't. Because she doesn't want to speak to you. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Look, you're wasting your breath. I've just told you, she doesn't want to speak to you. All right? Bye. Who is that? Derek. Derek? 
Eric, but why didn't you tell me? Because you don't want to talk to him. You didn't tell him that. Oh, yes, I did. I'm on your side, remember. Oh, Rita, oh, what's she going to think of me now? All right? Yes, Tarady. So, uh, how long are you going to keep here? Oh, search me. I didn't reckon I was ever going to get out again the way I felt a couple of days ago. I can't believe that, after what you've been through. How did you hear about it, anyhow? Paper. Paper? Yeah. Have you any idea who did it? Oh, one of them they have. I picked him out from his picture and the police got him the same afternoon. I wish I'd have got my hands on him first. It'd have been no stake to go batter than anybody else, I can tell you that. No, well, I'd rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. I thought you'd come to cheer me up. I have. What do you want me to do? Sing or dance? <laughs> you can tell me about Marion and that little girl of yours. They're fine. Well, haven't you got a photo of her out? No, not on me. Oh, honest fellas. I'll tell you what, I'll send you one as soon as I get home. How's that? Mm, I'll believe that when I see it, and all. Look, Hilda, I'm sorry I haven't kept in touch as often as I might have. But I've not forgotten you, you know. No, of course you haven't. I know how it is. Nothing's changed, honest. You're still on the bins. What else? Mind you, we do get a better class of rubbish up our way. <laughs> as long as you're happy. Have you ever known me any other way? <laughs> anyway, that's enough about me. What have you been up to? And the rest of me mates down the street. Well, I suppose the biggest thing was Bet Lynch's wedding. Bet Lynch married? That's right. Well, it can't be anybody I know. How do you figure that out? Because everybody I know had their chance and kicked it into touch long before I left. <laughs> Present company accepted, I take it. Well, I can't speak for him. <coughs> there, for you. Oh, thank you, Alec. But you needn't have bothered. I mean, just having you back is enough of a present for me. Oh, well, in that case, give us it back. It'll help towards next TV licence. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Ah, oh, don't mention it. Oh, yeah, try it on. No, it was just, uh, just something I saw I thought you'd uh, look great in. I take it you weren't feasting your beady eyes on some stripling <coughs> hamburger at the time? Hey, come on, Bet. Do me a favor. I, I've been working, you know. Aye, I know. I know your idea of work and all. It doesn't exactly include a pick and a shovel. Bet, love, I have been on a tour of just about every third-rate venue and lodging house in Germany. At least that's how it seems to me. You don't think I actually enjoyed it, do you? Did you make any money? Well, of course I did. Then you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you. I've missed you, too. Honest. Honest. There's been nobody to fetch me a cup of tea up in the morning. Nobody to help me with washing up. Nobody to put Vic right, on Right, I'm off. Jack's finishing up out there. I, I just thought I'd call in and see Elder for ten minutes. Oh, you know? give her my best love. Yeah, yeah we'll that do. goes for me as well. All right, then. See you later. Thank yes, you. See Jack. you. See you, though. So, uh, how is she? Hilda. Yeah. Well, she's doing all right. They just reckon it's going to take time. Oh, have you any idea how much time we're talking about? Oh, search me. That's up to the doctors, isn't it, love? So, in the meantime... Well, in the meantime, we're doing everything we all can to keep a pecker up. Oh, yes, I know all that. I'm thinking of a more pressing matter. Eh? We haven't got a cleaner, have we? Yes, that's £3.29 altogether. Oh, did you get me drawing Uh Yes. Yeah. Oh, um, I'll get it. Hello, cabin. Oh, hello, Mrs Humphreys. Well, if you don't want me money... Um, Here we are, love. Well, I don't know. How much did you say? Um, I'll have a word then when it comes in. You don't mind a bit of change? I'll be glad of Yes, I'll see you get your paper tonight. All right, bye, Mrs Humphreys. Bye. That was Mrs Humphreys. Yeah. She, she didn't get her evening paper. Wayne must have forgotten to deliver it. Wow. Can't think how he came to do that. But uh, where was I up to? Oh, it's all right, Mavis. I've just paid Rita. Oh, I'm sorry about that, on It could have been important. Well, it was important, wasn't it? Well, to Mrs Humphreys, any road. <laughs> I'll see you. See you tomorrow, love. Oh, really got him out of your system, haven't you? Well, whose fault is that? So surprise me. It was you that hung up on him. Oh, I give up, Mavis. I do, honestly. Well, I don't know how I'm going to look him in the eye ever again after that. I mean, you could have said anything. You could have said I was out at lunch, I was upstairs, anything. But no, you have to tell him that I don't want to speak to him. I take it you've no objections? Hello, cabin. Oh, hello, Mrs. Bottomley. Yes, he's done oh, that with a few Derek. people. Derek! Miss? What are you doing here? What am I doing here?
Have you any idea what I've been going through this afternoon? The anguish. Anguish? Rita hung up on me. She said you didn't want to speak to me. I couldn't believe it, Mavis. I was shocked, deeply shocked, that, that you could behave in such a cavalier fashion. I would have thought you were the last person in the world to kick a man when he's down. Well, you weren't down the last time she saw you. As I recall, you were over the moon because you'd managed to rescue that daft little note you'd left for Angela. Rita, please. It was a misunderstanding, Derek. A misunderstanding? Yes, Rita, a misunderstanding. Well, if you can assure me, that's all it oh, was. Yes, I can, Derek. But why did you ring? Uh, because I need to talk to you, Mavis. Oh. A matter of great urgency. In private. Um, could we go upstairs? Upstairs? Well, it, it really is very important, Mavis. I might almost say vital to our future relationship. Oh. Well, you better come through. And try not to oversleep. You'll be getting this place a bad name. If you sit there much longer, you're going to set rules. Only having five minutes. First time today I've seen me play with chair. Yeah, well, you can set five minutes setting this lot out. If I don't get that pie out of the oven, it's going to be a burnt offering. Flaming Nora, Vida, could you not even set a table? Well, she's gone upstairs, hasn't she? Well, I think that blood of hers must be on a time switch. Every time his woman wants to win, she's done. Oh. Now, look, that's enough. If you want some tea, come on. What is all this in aid of? What? There's tablecloth. There's knives and forks. Look, Jack, look, I just thought if we could sit down and have a civilised meal together, three of us, out and we can work something out here. There's only one thing I want working out, Vera. That's your mother out of this house, and the sooner the better. Oh, Jack! No, Vera! <laughs> now, what's up? Oh, no. Do us a favour, love. Set the knives and forks out. Look, I'm not daft, Avira. I know something's going on. Every time I come into the room, he's either blowing his top or walking out. Look, it's just our Jack, you know. It's not our Jack, is it? It's me. Look, nobody said that. Nobody has to. You've got it all wrong, man. Oh, no, I haven't. Look, you don't have to draw me no pictures, Avira. I know when I'm not wanted. I thought it would be best all round if I pack up and go. Best for everybody. No, oh, there's no need. Honest, there isn't. Can I smell some of burning? Oh, flaming hell. Oh. I don't understand how you could possibly jump to the conclusion that all was well between Angela and me. Well, you told me, Derek. Well, I might have said everything was all right, meaning that I'd managed to rescue the note before Angela's prying eyes spotted it. But all right between Angela and me? Oh, no, Mavis, that's certainly not what I meant. You've no idea what I've been going through. Trapped like a, like a fly in a spider's web, knowing I had to get out in order to survive. But one false move could destroy me. My job, my company car, my pension scheme, my life. Mavis, are you listening to me? Every word, Derek. But so far, I haven't heard a single thing. I haven't heard a dozen times before. Nothing's changed, Derek. I don't believe it ever will. But it has, Mavis. That's why I needed to talk to you. Angela's played right into my hands. She's seeing another man. Another man? Hmm. Angela? I'm convinced of it. I took a phone call for her last night from a friend she was supposed to be meeting at the golf club. At least, that's what she told me. But she'd made no such arrangement. Then it all clicked into place. But I'm not with you. Well, all the other time she was meant to be at the golf club. All the time she wouldn't even tell me where she was going. And there have been occasions recently when she's been on the phone and hung up when I came into the room. Don't you see, Mavis? It all adds up. She's betrayed me. She's been seeing someone else. Well, you've been seeing me, Derek. Well, yeah. Uh, we're not talking about me, Mavis. We're talking about Angela. Well, what are you going to do about it, then? Well, do about it? Don't you see she's presenting me with a perfect opportunity to get rid of her and her nauseous friends once and for all, without a blemish on my character and without risking my job, my company car... Your pension scheme. Exactly. All we need now is proof. We do? Well, it's not something I can do single-handed, Mavis. I need support, assistance. <sighs> and who else can I turn to but the one person who, through all the tribulations of the past tortuous months, has stood by me like a rock. 
Here you go, my son. Cheers. It's quiet in here tonight. Yeah, we'll have less of that. What? You're supposed to have eyes only for me, aren't you? Deprived husband, first night back in the nest. Never mind that till for once. Ah, you're right. Mind you, I'm glad to be back, I must say. You know, I don't think I got a decent night's sleep the whole time I was away. What makes you think tonight's going to be any different? Pet. So, what do you think of your old mocker then? Hey? Kill it up, eh? Joining the ranks of the educated, going back to school. I bet you could talk some sense into him. Sense? Yeah, well, there's no future in this college, like, is there? I mean, he had a nice little number going for him before. Oh, let's drop it, shall we, Kev? It's what I want to do, all right. Look, don't knock it. A mate of mine went back to school, did very nicely for himself, thank you very much. A mate of yours did? That's right. Well, there you are, you see. Now, what did he do? A business studies, accountancy, something like that? Nick the lead off the roof. <laughs> you damn beggar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's Ivy in. Not as I've noticed, no. Oh, give us half a lager. Have you had a word, then? Eh? With Amy about slinging a rook. I didn't have to, did I? What do you mean, you didn't have to? Well, she's not deaf, Jack. I mean, she knows what's been going on. She says she's no intentions of staying where she's not wanted. Do you know, something I could get to respect your mother when she's off then. Look, Jack, I can't just chuck my own mother out onto the street. Not after all she's done for me, bringing me up on her own, feeding me, clothing me. She hasn't had much of a life, Jack. Look, Vera, if you think I'm falling for this sob stuff, you're wasting your breath. Look, all I'm asking for is a bit more time, just till we get used to the situation. If I give it another million years, Vera, I could never get used to the situation. I cannot go on living under the same roof as that woman. Well, I never thought things would come to this. Still, if that's your last word... It is. I'm gonna miss you, Jack. of the Bailey is back every weeknight at nine only on plus try our quiz and win a prize with plus online at gplus.co.uk but next tonight the last in the series of ever decreasing circles